then he scored a beauty um, on the stretch pass against Montreal. So he's getting it done in many different ways. I really like this odds boost, and I'll throw a little bit more onto this here, Dan. Right now, Connor Garland, any to score over 0.5 points in this game, is the most bet on player prop at Playing Out Sports tonight at odds of 2.20. So, really interesting night, and Connor Garland right now playing some very good hockey up the lineup. Uh, Sat remains day to day, but the picks are all green checks right now for Sat. It's uh, it's. Four, he's going for four in a row. He's hit three in a row, uh, and he's back in J.T. Miller this evening. Yeah, this is an interesting one. J.T. Miller to score one-plus power play points, and, you know, we boosted this from odds of 2.0 to 3.20, so a $10 bet here returns you about $32. And, look, J.T. Miller, the, the power play production, uh, not quite what it was earlier in the season, so I think he's only got about six power play points in the last two months. Definitely the Canucks would like to see more production from that top power play unit. JT Miller obviously is, is uh, critical to that. But, you know, there's, it's going to be a challenge tonight. The LA Kings have the best power uh, penalty kill uh, in the NHL right now. And, you know, it depends who they take away or try to take away in the Canucks power play because you got JT Miller. He could play the setup, man. He could play the finisher. So this is a really interesting pick and definitely uh, some, some added value there. So, that has been on a hot streak here. Great to see. And, uh, you know, maybe he can uh, get another one here. Cam, we love it. We're going to keep looking at those futures once the Canucks clinch. And then uh, we start to know some playoff opponents. It's going to be a fun time around Vancouver. Yeah. Take care, guys. All the best. There is Cam Tucker, BCLC. It's the Playdown Sports pregame show. Receive your $10 sports free bet when you make a same-game parlay wager of $10 or more on NHL games. Combine multiple selections from one game to complete your same-game parlay wager. No promo code required. Visit playnow.com slash hockey SGP to learn more. Conditions apply. Must be 19-plus to play. If you gamble, use your game sense. It's Dan Riccio and... Bick Nazar here on the Play Now Sports pregame show. And, you know, we've not seen a ton of Connor Garland with Nils Hoaglander and um, Elias Pettersson, of course. But in 33 and a half minutes over these last number of games together at five on five, they've got five goals for and just one against. They clicked on Saturday, were, by the coach's estimation, the best line, the line that drove the team on the night. We saw the goal from, well, the two goals from Nils Hoaglander, secondary assist to Connor Garland, primary assist to Elias Pettersson, goals to Nils Hoaglander. It, uh, I didn't expect it to work as well as it has so far, mm-hmm. But tonight is probably a bigger test against a much more defensively stout L.A. team. And it's a huge credit to Nils Hoaglander. He looks fantastic on Saturday. Unbelievable. And and I've been a skeptic at times of his opportunity higher up in the lineup. That was a game that sold me in a big, big way. That come playoff time, he's going to be frustrating to deal with for for opposition. But also, you got to hold up your end of the bargain, too. You can't just be antics and frustrating opponents Gotta are you producing and two very good goals for Nils Hoaglander being in the right spot Elias Patterson can find you on a tic-tac-toe and then fantastic leg kick that faked out even Elias Patterson who had a first uh, the closest look at it and that's what you want to see and it, and on top of that like make smart plays in the neutral zone a couple of defensive plays so that was the big selling point of a guy who's you know, had to take one on the chin going back down to the AHL, working on his game. Ian McIntyre told a great story on post-game show last game. That Connor Garland called him up and said, hey, like, you're going to be back here and it's going to be great for you to, to go down there. And, and you've got the chops and in five yeah. years from now, you, you're going to look at it totally different. Well, that was a huge game. And to do it in one calendar year, big, big progress for Nils Hoaglander. And what an opportunity to continue uh, growing in the organization. Well, it's a big, uh, big piece of humble pie that he had to... He had to eat when he got sent down last year. And, look, with the way things were going under Bruce Boudreau, uh, there wasn't much development going on at, at the at the highest level for the Vancouver Canucks. So it turned out to be a great spot for him. We're seeing like, – it's kind of the blueprint, right? This team was not developing enough players from within, whether they were draft picks or college free agents – 
European free agents, even guys just to play roles within the organization weren't being developed enough. Now you bring over Abbotsford, like you bring them over from Utica. You've got to utilize that. You've got to take advantage of that. Nils Hoaglander seems to be the symbol of that, right? Where Jim Rutherford, one of the first things he said is, we got to fix Abbotsford. we got to get it going. We've got to develop players internally better. And Nils Hoaglander is one of the, the, the early fruits of that labor, the priority to develop. And you're starting to see it with Vasily Podkolzin. I know there hasn't been goals yet for Podkolzin, but how much more functional of a player has he looked since getting the recall from, from Abbotsford? I mean, players have come up, and they've not looked out of place. Do they look like they can be impact players at the NHL? Hoaglander's the only one that's shown that potential ability to this point. But Arshdeep Baines didn't look out of place. Pod Colson doesn't look out of place. I mean, Nils Oman... Another guy that had to develop in Abbotsford at times last year, towards the end of last season. Like all these guys have shown that they can do a job at the NHL level, which like they weren't even developing that prior to this regime coming in. Yeah, and it's a huge credit to the coaching staff and the management group that works with the AHL. Ryan Johnson, Jerry, Jeremy Colton, and everybody yeah. else included, that the integration of when guys come up is smooth. We haven't even seen two game work it out yeah. samples here. Guys have come up and smoothly stepped in the lineup and Vasily Podkolzin, as you mentioned, he's endeared himself to a lot of fans that at the very least, look, the, the, there's still growth that obviously has to happen and, and Donnie mentioned, was mentioning earlier, it's interesting to see how second rounders doing so well in comparison to the first rounder. But you know what? Give credit to Vasily Podkolzin because in that role on the fourth line, He's providing something. It's not just empty minutes and make no mistakes. There's a lot of physicality coming from Vasily Podkolzin's game. You notice it a great deal. And it's, it's not just senseless hitting for the sake of appealing to the crowd and get a rise out of the crowd. It's functional hitting, taking guys out of the play, making smart plays defensively. And also the way he's carried the puck through the neutral zone, I thought has been really strong. I know it's something Rick Tockett has pointed out as well from basically his first game in, that he's been very confident, carrying through the puck through the neutral zone, and situationally finding the right times to dump it in, get his line change and get teammates on, or, or just hold the puck up. Whatever he needs to do, he's played really strong minutes, even in a fourth-line role. Uh, a couple of questions uh, to get to on the Dunbar Lumber text message inbox before we get you to puck drop between the Canucks and L.A. Kings here on the Play Now Sports pregame show. Uh, this one from BP Admission. Will the Canucks be comfortable at the top of the standings with high expectations in the playoffs? It's a very different mindset than sliding into the playoffs and playing well. Um, I, I think the idea of being an underdog going into the playoffs is usually overblown and I would say that even last year Florida going up against Boston as a, as a one seed, like Florida had won the President's Trophy a year before I think in the flat cap era we're seeing the parity and the, the difference between one seeds and uh, let's say 16 seeds or 8 seeds be very different than maybe what it used to be in the National Hockey League day yeah, certainly. Uh, by the way, I was, I was just doing some spreadsheeting because a, a great of listener. You were. No, no, I, I want a, a, a listener sent us the list of all the uh, the seeds that have won the cup. Oh, so perfect! Big shout out to Darren Diehard who texted in and gave us a link to uh, all the li all, all the uh, seeded winners. And yeah, if it's, uh, we sure it's not a virus. <laughs> no, no, we're certain <laughs> it's not that. But yeah, as we predicted, uh, if you're the number one seed since the lockout, uh, or in the cap era, it's two, two, two cup wins for the number one seed, three for the number two seed, three for the number three seed. It's, it, it pretty much goes exactly how you would expect it. To so go. being among the top seeds is not a bad thing. Yeah. In the NHL. Uh, so and, there's your and answer. Since, expan since expansion, it's six Stanley Cup wins for uh, the first seed. There is your answer, BP in mission. Uh, this text, remember how good the Canucks were before they got Lindholm? Let the big guy rest. You guys are bang on. Suter can fill the role until he feels Lindholm can go. All right. We'll get to puck drop. No Lindholm for the Canucks, but a big matchup with the LA Kings. And puck drop is coming up next on the Sportsnet Radio Network. 
Play Now Sports, the official sports betting partner of the Vancouver Canucks. Breaking story from Alpine News Network. Ron is a teacher helping bright minds, but this time he needed help. Alpine Credits and a cosmic superhero with a debt consolidation loan. She conjured a magic book, Debt Consolidation 101. Lesson 1, consolidate debt into one low monthly payment. Lesson 2, nothing. It's a short book. Own your home? Need a loan? Alpine Credits can help. Alpine Credits, where homeowners get approved. When was the last time you hung out with a legend? A true Vancouver legend that every pro athlete, actor, and rock star who is anyone has gotten to know. A place where a legendary night can happen any night. Isn't it time you got reacquainted with this Vancouver legend? Pre-game, post-game, even during the game. The number five orange. If you know your face-offs from your playoffs, you're ready to play now. If you've ever explained icing, you're ready to play now. If you know what PPG stands for, hint, it's power play goal. You're so ready for Play Now Sports, the official sports betting partner of the Vancouver Canucks. Get started with a $20 free bet at playnow.com slash radio. Conditions apply. Know your limit. Play within. It must be 19 plus. If you know your face-offs from your playoffs, you're ready to play now. If you've ever explained icing, you're ready to play now. If you know what PPG stands for, hint, it's power play goal. You're so ready for Play Now Sports, the official sports betting partner of the Vancouver Canucks. Get started with a $20 free bet at playnow.com slash radio. Conditions apply. Know your limit. Play within. It must be 19 plus. Play Now Sports, the official sports betting partner of the Vancouver Canucks. It was another entertaining night at Rogers Arena on Saturday when Niels Hoaglander and the Canucks edged the Flames to extend their winning streak to three games. Connor Garland into the Calgary zone. Passes right side, Pedersen to Hoaglander, he scores! Niels Hoaglander cashes in with his 21st of the season, and the Canucks draw first blood 48 seconds into the game. Now Garland gets it to center. It's a two-on-0. Patterson to Hoaglander in a low to the backhand. He scores! What a move by Niels Hoaglander. He's got his second of the game, and the Canucks go up 2-0. to nothing. Tonight, Vancouver looks to keep the good times rolling against the Kings in a potential playoff preview. It's the Vancouver Canucks and the Los Angeles Kings. NHL hockey is on the air, live from Rogers Arena in Vancouver. You're listening to Vancouver Canucks Hockey on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Brendan Batchelor alongside Randy Jando with you tonight from the Jim Robson Broadcast Gondola inside Rogers Arena as we continue to get you set for the Canucks and the Kings. A couple of big storylines ahead of this game, Randy. First of all, Elias Lindholm will not play out with an undisclosed injury, has missed the last couple of practices for the Canucks, did feature in the win over Calgary on Saturday, scored an empty netter, but he is not good enough to go tonight. It is listed day-to-day, according to head coach Rick Tockett. It's been a talking point in Vancouver for the last week or so where he hasn't looked right, and you mentioned it. He scored that goal against Calgary. He's been winning face-offs throughout, but a little bit of zip, maybe not on that that shot as we're accustomed to seeing from Elias Lindholm. He won't be playing, but Pew Suter getting an opportunity at the center position and Phil DiGiuseppe draws into the lineup, getting a chance playing alongside JT Miller and Brock Besser. There's also some changes to the defensive pairings. We'll talk about those in a couple of minutes. The other big story, the Canucks, with some help from the Golden Knights on the out-of-town scoreboard, could officially clinch a playoff spot tonight. And times moves fast, doesn't it? Last year we were talking about winding the season down. Now the Vancouver Canucks two points away, maybe one point away from clinching a playoff spot and also hitting 100 points potentially tonight with a win. So this is a very quick moving season for this team. They played well and with a little bit of help, they could clinch that playoff spot. Golden Knights are leading the Blues 1-0 after one in the lone other game on the NHL out-of-town scoreboard tonight. 
The keys to this game here in Vancouver are brought to you by Yellow Cab Vancouver, your go-to for a safe and affordable ride anytime. Download the app and book your ride today. And our first key for the Canucks, they've been good at it all year, but they need to be again tonight the start to this game. They've scored the first goal of the game 48 times this year and won 34 of those games. And both of these teams are really strong when they have a lead. LA's very good too. That's why it's important for Vancouver to jump on this team early and especially hold on to that lead. But it, for me, it's about that first goal. Can you start dictating the game towards LA rather than dictating it to you? Our second key is don't hold on to the puck for too long. And Rick Tockett talked about this on the pregame show. When the Kings came in here and beat Vancouver 5-1 to one last month, he thought they weren't decisive enough. They held on to pucks too long, and the L.A. forecheck was able to swarm them. The forecheck was strong, but they also have wingers going back the other way with speed. Whether it's Trevor Moore, or Kempe, or Kevin Fiala, they can make you pay if you take time making decisions. You have to be decisive against this L.A. Kings team. Tonight's betting odds are brought to you by Play Now Sports, the official sports betting partner of the Vancouver Canucks. The Canucks are favorites at home on the money line tonight, so a $10 bet on the Canucks. Money line odds has a potential total payout of $17.69. The scratch is tonight. First for Vancouver, Dakota Joshua and Thatcher Demko remain on the injured list. As mentioned, they are joined by Elias Lindholm, who won't feature tonight. Noah Juleson and Mark Friedman are healthy scratches. The Kings don't have Phoenix Cough. Carl Grundstrom or Alex Turcott due to injuries. Arthur Kaliev is their lone healthy scratch as Jim Hiller's team will go with 11 forwards and 7 defensemen tonight in Vancouver. Starting goaltenders first for the Canucks. It's Casey DeSmith again. He's 3-1-1 in five games since Thatcher Demko went out injured and has a 9.05 save percentage in that stretch. At the other end of the ice, it's Cam Talbot who's been playing very well of late. He's won his last three straight games with a 9-4 save percentage in that stretch. The starting lineups are presented by Angry Otter Liquor. Shop a top-line selection of beer, wine, and spirits. The Kings start the game with the defensive pairing of Vladislav Gavrikov and Matt Roy. Up front, it's Kevin Fiala on left wing with Philip Deneau down the middle and Trevor Moore on the right side. For the Canucks, Quinn Hughes starts on left defense with Tyler Myers to his right. The forward line that will match up against the Deneau line is Ilya Mikheyev, Teddy Bluger and Sam Lafferty and Randy. When the Canucks faced the Kings in L.A. earlier this month and eked out a close 2-1 win, there was a lot of line matching from Jim Hiller. And now we're going to see Rick Tockett try and get away from that a little bit here tonight as he starts his third line against the Deneau line. This should be a heck of a matchup as well because the top three lines for the L.A. Kings, they've got some very good centers down the middle. Pierre-Luc Dubois on their third line. But with Vancouver, you're able to dictate that matchup. JT Miller against NJ Kopitar is what you expect to see, but there could be some changes and there could be some surprises. Rick Tockett doesn't necessarily like to hard match up himself. He likes to have it a little pretty open-ended. We'll see what happens tonight. As mentioned, some changes to the defensive pairs too. Quinn Hughes alongside Tyler Myers, while Ian Cole will skate with Carson Soucy and it's Nikita Zadorov and Phillip. Heronic. It is also the Canucks and the Kings tonight from downtown Vancouver. We'll have the opening face-off next on Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey on Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. If you know your face-offs from your playoffs, you're ready to play now. If you've ever explained icing, you're ready to play now. If you know what PPG stands for, hint, it's power play goal. We're so ready for Play Now Sports, the official sports betting partner of the Vancouver Canucks. Get started with a $20 free bet at playnow.com slash radio. Conditions apply. Know your limit. Play within. It must be 19 plus. Breaking story from Alpine News Network. Sandra and Kabir are celebrating 50 years of marriage by turning their boring bedroom into a spicy one. Oh, my. Alpine Credits sent a super strength hero to help with a home renovation loan. Floors, windows, a heart-shaped button that plays this tune. Okay, I think that's quite enough. Own your home? Need a loan? Alpine Credits can help. Alpine Credits, where homeowners get approved. Taxi! Yellow Cab Vancouver is your go-to for a safe and affordable ride anytime. Secure your ride back by downloading the all-new Yellow Cab app and book your prepaid rides. And right now, you can use promo code 2024YELLOW to receive 10% off your next trip. That's promo code 2024YELLOW. Thanks, bud. 
Download the Yellow Cab Vancouver app on iOS or Android and book your ride today. Or visit yellowcabonline.com. That's yellowcabonline.com. The race is on. Get ready for the rush on Sportsnet. It's getting close to playoff time. And here we go. This is the stretch drive. You cannot let down your guard. The time when every game and every point can make all the difference. If you get in, you can win. The rush to the playoffs is on. Don't miss all the NHL action on Sportsnet. Here for hockey. Watch on Sportsnet or stream on Sportsnet+. Plus. Waypoint Insurance has been here for over 150 years, seeking and sourcing ways to fill your home with safety, comfort, and peace of mind. They travel the same roads, trek the same trails, and make their way through life's adventures, setting their sights on a life worth living. Because this is Waypoint's home, their playground, their livelihood. So go explore. From business to home to auto to personal insurance, Waypoint has your back. Waypoint Insurance, together protecting what you love. Visit waypoint.ca. Rock climb at the epic Skaha Bluffs. Or bike the over 100 trails of Three Blind Mice and the Kettle Valley Rail Trail. When outdoor adventures are what you're looking for this spring, Penticton, B.C. is home to it all. Rock climbing, mountain biking, hiking, golfing, kayaking, and more. The options are endless, and the views are incredible. Plus, don't forget to take a break at one of the many wineries or the eight craft breweries that call Penticton home. Discover B.C.'s mecca of adventure. Head to visitpenticton.com. This is Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey. Down the right wing, shoots and scores! On the official home of the Canucks, Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Welcome back inside Rogers Arena, where it's just about time to drop the puck between the Vancouver Canucks and the Los Angeles Kings in the 72nd game of the regular season for Vancouver. Yes, only 11 games left before the postseason, and the Canucks can clinch a playoff spot with a win tonight and some help on the out-of-town scoreboard. Vancouver is wearing the black skate uniforms with the red and yellow trim. Canucks will skate from right to left in the first period. The Kings in their road whites with black and silver trim will go from left to right. The referees are Tom Shemaleski and Chris Lee. Brandon Garelitz and Johnny Murray are on the lines. Canucks tied for first place in the NHL right now. As Philip Deneau wins the faceoff back into his own zone, and the Kings will take possession to begin this one tonight. Los Angeles sitting in third in the Pacific Division at the moment. Tyler Myers with a puck at his own line, goes far side for Teddy Bluger. Near boards Quinn Hughes. Back to Myers, right wing to the L.A. line, dumps it in. Matt Roy back to it behind his own goal, hit hard into the end boards by Laverty. Gavrikov's after it down low, tied up by Teddy Bluger. Philip Deneau back to help out. Sweeps it middle of the ice for Roy. Gets it out to center, but only as far as Tyler Myers. He takes it back to his own line. Feeds ahead to Bluger. He gains the red line. Chips it near boards for Hughes, who bats it past Anze Kopitar and into the Kings zone. Kopitar picks up the puck at his own line. Fires a heavy pass left side for Quinton Byfield into the Vancouver end. Floats it to the net, and Casey DeSmith has an easy stop and covers for a whistle with Zadorov getting into it with one of the Kings behind the Vancouver goal. That's Adrian Kempe, and a big crowd forms as a result with the linesman getting to work early, just 50 seconds into a scoreless game. I'm not liking Kempe's chances in that tussle, but credit to him for standing up for himself behind the net as Nikita Zadorov just finishing a little check behind the net as Casey DeSmith had covered up the puck and no punches really thrown, but a couple of face washes as Nikita Zadorov, that's his game, making sure that the star players of the opposition know he's on the ice. Rick Tockett electing to have the Miller line match up against the Kopitar line. And they're going to contest the defensive zone faceoff here. Kopitar and Miller to the right of Casey DeSmith. Scrambled face-off one by the Kings. Byfield gets it left point for Drew Doughty, who rims it behind the Vancouver net. Adrian Kempe missed the puck, comes near boards for Brock Besser. Tied up by Kopitar. Di Giuseppe pins him to the boards. Byfield in there, too. And Kopitar tried a centering pass, blocked by Besser. The battle continues along the wall. We're going to be saying that a lot tonight. It's going to be a tight checking game, we would imagine. And Byfield dumps it right corner. For Anze Kopitar, tipped it behind the Vancouver net. Philip Hironik with it, lifts it high in the air to the L.A. line, and Besser will get in on the forward check. Mikey Anderson back to it near corner, got it up the boards to Doughty, threw it to the line, not out, long shot by Miller, went wide to the net. Besser was looking for a tip in the slot, but wasn't able to touch the puck. 
Dowdy in his own end. Passes right wing to center. Puck is lifted in deep by Alex LaFerriere, and Sushi's back to it near corner. Threw it up the boards. LaFerriere knocks it down again for Pierre-Luc Dubois, right wing. Out of the line for Jordan Spence. Dumps it to the near corner. Ian Cole breaks up the cycle. Back into the Vancouver lineup after missing the last couple. The pass is to center for Garland. Left wing to Hoaglander who dumps it into the corner. And Pedersen goes after Laferriere on the forecheck. But the Kings forward knocks it free to his teammate. Victor Arvidsson. And now Jordan Spence gets a pass right wing at the Vancouver line. But Dubois was ahead of the play. Offside against the Kings. 2-0-4 into a scoreless first period tonight at Rogers Arena. And some play away from the puck as J.T. Miller finishes his check on Victor Arvidsson. And Arvidsson, a slash on the back of the leg, which could have been called a retaliatory play there. But that's what J.T. Miller does. He gets under the skin of players when he's finishing those checks. He can score, but he can also beat you physically, which is something he's been doing for the last two or three years, especially here in Vancouver. Only 11 forwards for the Kings tonight, as I mentioned earlier. So Quinton Byfield being double shifted out here with the fourth line right now. But the Canucks win the faceoff and dump it into the Kings zone. Pod Coles in left wing. Rims it around the end boards to Heronic right wing boards. Dumps it back behind the net. Oman and England had fallen to the ice in a battle with each other. Neither could find the puck. Now Zadorov steps up, lays a big hit on Blake Lazard. But the Kings come away with the puck, and Jordan Spence gains the red line on right wing and dumps it in. Philip Heronic. He's behind his own goal for Zadorov. Threw it up the near wall for Niels Oman. Now for Vasily Potkoles into center. Drops to Heronic. He gains the red line on right wing. Dumps it in. And the Canucks look at a wholesale change. As Podkolzin and Lazat jab at each other with their sticks going off on a change. This already has a playoff level of intensity in terms of the feel to tonight's game. And we're not even three minutes in. Laferriere, left corner in the Vancouver zone. Carries up the board, cycles to Arvidsson in the corner. He dumps it behind the net for Dubois. Here, Luke Dubois out the right wing side. Carries to the line. Passes across. Long shot by Roy. Tip wide of the net. And Teddy Bluger finds the loose puck near boards. Bluger flips it to the Kings' blue line. Roy drops it near side for Laferriere and goes back to Roy, who takes it behind his own net. Again for Laferriere on the near boards. Drives right wing to center. Is hit by Miller as he dumps it in, and Ian Cole meets it far corner. Spins it back around to the near side for Quinn Hughes. Hughes protecting the puck under pressure from Fiala, who chases him to the end boards, but Hughes makes a nice play up the wall to GT Miller. He's tied up by Deneau. Miller still with it, tried to play it middle of the ice, knocked down by Trevor Moore, who swept it wide to the net of Casey DeSmith. And now Hughes from behind his own goal, skates it up the far side, flips it to center for Besser, who was tripped up. No call. Here's Anderson the other way. Left wing Fiala trying to drive the goal. Mishandled the puck. Deneau knocks it into the slot, but right to Ian Cole. And he makes a nice pass right wing to center for Phil DiGiuseppe, who gains the red line, dumps it in, and the Canucks will go for a complete change. And that's going back to your key of the game. It was moving the puck up quickly and not hanging on to the puck. That's how a little bit of that pressure came from L.A. as Quinn Hughes peeled back and reset. Adrian Kempe hits Carson Soucy in the numbers on the forecheck, and this is going to be an L.A. penalty. Kempe seems mystified as to why he's being called for this, but it was away from the puck. He caught Soucy from behind in the far corner. Now the Canucks will get the first power play of the game, 4-16 into a scoreless first period. And it is a cross-check to the back of the upper back. And that's really a response from Kempe to some of the physicality early on in this game. And it started with Zadorov going after Kempe behind the Canucks net. Then a hit by Zadorov on Lozot. And Kempe gets called for roughing here as the Vancouver Canucks get an early power play. But it definitely does have a playoff feel where... A very measured approach offensively, but physically, both of these teams engaging, and a lot of it's coming off the puck where there are slashes. There's pushing and shoving as they're changing. First power play of the game for the Canucks, and it will be a test for them. The Kings have the number one ranked penalty kill in the league, operating at nearly 86% this year. Canucks, meanwhile, just two for 16 on the man advantage in their last five games. Overall, they're 12th in the league. And a little bit of a delay as Cam Talbot has an equipment issue and has had to go to the Kings bench to get some repairs. Sonic 104.9 is Vancouver's new alternative radio station. If you love legends like Foo Fighters and Green Day, along with discovering all new sounds, then welcome to the new alternative, Sonic 104.9. Cam Talbot still at the Kings bench. Looks like he's getting his skates worked on, and I think he's good to go now. He's testing it off and going back to the net. Penalty killers for the Kings are Kopitar, Lewis, Roy, and Gavrikov. 
top power play unit features Pew Suter along with the usual suspects Pedersen, Besser, Miller, and Hughes. Face off left circle, won by Miller. Back to Hughes at the point. JT Miller gets it again, left half boards, has a give and go with Brock Besser. Miller feeds the line for Hughes. Back to Miller on the left wing wall. Carries bottom of the circle into the slot for Suter with a one-timer. He fanned on it loose in the crease. Talbot made the save, but Kopitar collects the rebound and lifts it high in the air all the way down the ice. Lewis forechecking on the penalty kill. Hughes back to the puck will now wind to center for Besser. Right wing to Suter. Dumps it behind the Kings net. Hughes is after it on the forecheck. It's Roy into the end boards. Besser's in there too. All four Kings penalty killers below the goal line trying to win the puck, but it comes to Pedersen right point. Fires it rink wide left side for Miller. Back to Pedersen, middle of the ice with room. Now to the right circle for Hughes. They'll switch spots. Hughes passes left wing for Miller. Down low to Besser. Back to Miller. Tips it to Hughes. Right side. Pedersen wanted the one-timer. Had to take it on his back end. He's forced to the corner by Gavrikov, who knocks the puck off his stick. They'll battle for it down low. Besser trying to dig it free. Comes up the boards. Pedersen with Gavrikov on his back. Gets it back to the line for Hughes, who can't hold in under pressure from Gavrikov, who clubbed it into his own bench. So the faceoff will come back in Kings territory with 53 seconds left in the Vancouver power play. 5.23 elapsed in the first period. No score between the Canucks and Kings. And this Kings penalty kill can be extremely aggressive on the outside as Gavrikov working very hard along the wall to disrupt and then eventually gets the puck across the line. It's kind of what they do where you give them a half a second to get involved in the play. They'll close on you real quick. Second power play unit out there now, but with two defensemen on it, Myers and Hironik, along with Garland, Hoaglander, and Pod Colson. The silly Pod Colson has it behind the Kings net. Right corner to Hoaglander, back to Pod Colson down low. Rims it left point for Myers, holds in on his back end. Chips it down the near side for Garland, knocked down in a battle with Doughty. Trevor Moore trying to clear the zone, but Myers gloved it down. Looked like he kept it in, but the linesman on the far wall Whistles play down, and there'll be a neutral zone faceoff now with 31 seconds left in the Adrian Kempe roughing minor. The Canucks' last game scored a power play goal against Calgary. It was JT Miller along the left-hand side in his office off a one-time pass from Brock Besser. But in this power play, it's been very difficult to set up. They've had a half chance from Pete Suter. Outside of that, not much. Hironik gains the L.A. line on right wing, drops it far boards for Hoaglander. Top of the circle. Now to Myers at the line with a one-timer. Blocked by Lazat in the slot, and Hoaglander gets it back. Cutting off the wall, trying to wind into the middle of the ice. Was poke checked by Anderson, keeps the puck. Attempted a pass to the side of the goal for Pod Colson, and Anderson got his stick in the passing lane and tipped it out of play. Just nine seconds remaining in the power play now. And this Kings penalty kill takes real pride in plays like that, where it's Anderson just getting his stick in the lane and right after that happens Drew Doughty gives him a whack in support to say that's that's how you kill a penalty and it's details like that that make them a dangerous team in the playoffs sure they might not shoot out the lights they might not score that much but their defensive details are very very good only allowing just over two and a half goals per game this year Third best in the league in that category. They clear it down the ice. Kempe's out of the box, so the Canucks are 0 for 1 on the power play. Hughes trying to pass left wing to center for JT Miller. He mishandled it, then he ran over Kempe in on the forecheck as the puck is cleared back to the L.A. line. They come together again in front of the benches. As Kempe tried to step into Miller, and now the puck is cleared into Kings territory. England passes far side for Kempe. Drops it back to England as Miller finished his check on number nine for the Kings yet again. And Arvidsson gets the puck right wing, lifts it into the Vancouver zone. Hughes back to it. D to D to Myers, far boards. Rink wide left wing to center for Besser. Chips it to the Kings blue line. McKayev's after it on the four check, but Matt Roy gets it free for Pierre Luc Dubois. Right wing into the Vancouver zone with room cutting into the slot. Drops one timer, they score. Kevin Fiala in the middle of the ice snaps it past Casey DeSmith. On the setup by Pierre Luc Dubois, and the Kings take a one nothing lead just after the seven minute mark of the first period. And the Kings get the oh so important first goal in this matchup as Dubois comes down the right hand side, and there's a lot of room to operate there as he beats the forward coming back, and the defensive pairing after that just gets a little crossed up as there's three Kings coming down, and Ian Cole just backs up right into the blue paint as Brock Besser is left behind by Pierre-Luc Dubois, ends up making that pass 
across the ice to Fiala, and it's an easy finish for the Kings forward to make it 1-0. Fiala's 24th of the season comes at 7.01 of the first period to give the Kings the lead. The time of the goal is brought to you by Crow, your trusted advisors for 55 years. Learn more at Crow Mackay. Dot C A. So the Canucks will have to try and battle from behind here as they gain the LA line and Lafferty dumps it behind the Kings net. Teddy Bluger wriggles away from Gavrikov, try to wrap around, stopped by Talbot. It's loose in the crease, but the net comes off as Movarara pushed Mikheyev into the post to knock it off its moorings and a good response by the Canucks right after giving up the goal won't yield any results. 721 gone in the first. Kings lead the Canucks 1-0 on Alpine Credits. Canucks Hockey streaming on the Sportsnet app and along the Sportsnet radio network. White Spots Turkey Dinner is back. Treat your family to the great taste of the traditional turkey dinner with all the fixins, or pre-order their heat and serve dinner for two and enjoy it when you want it. Only available until April 1st. Visit whitespot.ca for details. What does David L. Young of Dexter Realty have in common with an elite goal scorer? He gets pucks into the nets with precision, and he'll bring you home. Vancouver's David L. Young of Dexter Realty. Here, there, everywhere. Homes by DavidLYoung.com. Hi, this is Kirk McLean. When I'm not on the ice, I look for luxury, style, and of course, an exceptional drive. I found everything in my GV80 from Genesis Richmond. I invite you to experience one for yourself. Lease the Genesis GV80 SUV from only 3.9% with all-inclusive pricing as low as $76,000. Visit Genesis Richmond at the Richmond Auto Mall or at genesisrichmond.ca today. Open road. Unlimited possibilities ahead. With the thrill of playoff hockey just around the corner. It's time to check out Pastime Sports and Games four locations at Burnaby Metrotown, Guilford Town Center, Surrey, Sawasan Mills and Delta, and introducing the new store in Langley, featuring Western Canada's largest selection of trading cards and sports memorabilia, along with the widest range of authentic jerseys to make sure you're ready for the playoffs. For more info and a list of upcoming autograph sessions and playoff specials, visit pastimesports.ca. Hi, this is Matthew Dunco, and you're on the home of the Canucks, Sportsnet 650. 721 into the first period tonight in Vancouver. The Kings lead the Canucks one to nothing. Enjoy a good selly? You're ready to play now. Get your $20 free bet at playnow.com slash radio. Must be 19 plus to play. Conditions apply. Kevin Fiala with the lone goal of the hockey game is 24th of the year from Pierre Luc Dubois and Victor Arvidsson. Well, there's a face-off of the Kings zone, one by the Canucks. Sidorov tried a one-timer right off a clean face-off win by Miller, but it was blocked by a crowd of bodies in the slot, and the Kings get it out to center. Zidorov bats it down at his own line. Kempe chipped it in. Byfield was ahead of the play. It's offside against L.A. We talked about it before the game. The first goal in this game is going to be really, really important, especially with both of these teams and the way that they can score and then eventually, you know, defend and grind out games. And LA Kings are are very strong in that regard as well. Just like the Vancouver Canucks, when they lead after one period, they're 21, three and five. So they can hold on to leads very well. Canucks win the face off of their own lines. Zadorov skates to center and fires it in behind the Kings goal. Besser's after it on the forward check. It's Anderson into the far corner, comes loose to Giuseppe and he'll dump it behind the net. Drew Doughty on the near boards. Fires it off the glass and out to center. Hironic tried to bat it ahead for Zadorov. Broken up by Kempe. Nice feed ahead for Kopitar down the middle with a high-rising wrister that was fought off by DeSmith off the shoulder. And Besser flips it out to center. Dowdy at his own line. Both teams completing changes. The veteran Kings defenseman who leads the NHL in average ice time. Pass to center for Fiala, chipped it to the Vancouver line, cleared out by Garland, and Doughty throws it back into his own zone for Matt Roy. Roy again to Doughty on the near boards. Passes left wing to center for Fiala, gave it away to Garland, middle of the ice, tried to dump it in and hit the linesman, comes to Hoaglander, he chips it into the Kings zone, but the Canucks are called offside as Pedersen was ahead of the play on the near wall. Can't blame Pedersen on that one as the linesman got in the way, but a little bit of room for the LA Kings to operate in the offensive zone Remember, these are new-look pairings for the Vancouver Canucks, so just a, a good opportunity by Kopitar coming up the middle of the ice and really trying to split the defenseman. Goes on the right-hand side and gets a shot off that 
is a right shoulder save by Casey DeSmith. Uh, not an easy save to make, but he makes it. Hoaglander chips it into the L.A. zone off the faceoff at the Kings blue line. Pedersen right wing, trying to rink wide pass, intended for Garland, tipped to the corner by Moore, but it didn't miss the near post by much. Canucks continuing to work on the forward check. Pedersen gets it free with the help of Hoaglander. Back to Hughes. Now to the right wing side for Myers, carrying down the boards. Leaves for Hoaglander behind the net. Steps out of the way of Gavrikov, who's able to steal the puck. Carries it up the far boards. Hoaglander pursues him on the back check. Pedersen there, too. But Deneau back to help out. Passes right wing to center for Moore, and he'll gain the Vancouver line. Trevor Moore on the near boards. Watched closely by Quinn Hughes. Knocked the puck off his stick. Comes to Matt Roy behind the Vancouver net. Dropped it to Dubois. He lost it to Garland, who leaves down low for Myers. And the Canucks can try and set up the breakout. So there's the Kings' forecheck again. Myers stumbles and missed a pass from Hughes. And Arvidsson gets it. Right point for Spence with a heavy drive. Tipped off a stick on net. DeSmith made the save as Pod Colson tried to block it. But ended up deflecting it on his own goal. And the Kings still have pressure in the Vancouver end. Dubois battling with Hughes near side. Suter gets it free, flips it over the head of Jordan Spence to the Kings line. Neil Zoman after it on the four check. Forced to the corner boards by England. It's played loose by Pod Coles into the line for Ian Cole. Rims it around the end wall. Suter's after it right corner. Missed the puck. Arvidsson has it instead for the Kings. Takes it back behind his own net. Canucks are changing. And Arvidsson will leave down low for Andreas England. And then for Jordan Spence behind the LA net. Just past the midway mark, first period. Kings lead the Canucks one to nothing. As Ian Cole breaks up a pass at center, goes right wing for Sam Lafferty. He floats it deep into the LA end. Goes after it on the four check. Jordan Spence played it around to the near side. Ian Cole holds in left point with a long shot that was gloved and held by Cam Talbot. 941 remaining in the opening period. The Kings are up one nothing on the Canucks on Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey on Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Professionals know that you win the game by taking care of the details. Kubota skid steers, excavators, and loaders from Douglas Lake Equipment and Avenue Machinery let you be a champion on the work site. Now, Douglas Lake Equipment and Avenue Machinery want you to master your own property with the Kubota BX23 subcompact tractor. Dig, mow, and move with the Kubota quality you'd expect. Find Kubota at Douglas Lake Equipment and Avenue Machinery together online at DLEAMC.com. It's the Driven by Desire Spring Sales Event at Mercedes-Benz Boundary. Right now, lease from as low as 0.99% for 24 months and receive up to $5,000 in cash credits on select models. Explore a premium selection of vehicles and drive one home while supplies last. Don't miss out. Take advantage of the Spring Sales Event today. Conditions apply. Mercedes-Benz Boundary. Off Boundary and Low Heat in Vancouver. A Delari franchise dealership. Part of Canada's largest automotive group. Hello? Hi, Fiona. It's me. Sarah. Are the diamond prices at Spence still as low as they were? Yes, but no one knows how long that will last. Especially with what's happening worldwide. What do you mean? Diamond prices so low, people all over the world are frantically buying diamonds right now. You planning to get a big diamond? Certainly giving it some thought. Shall I tell Callum and Michael that I heard from you? Are they aware that you and I know each other? No. Let's leave it that way for now. Spence, located in Vancouver and Langley. Hey, this is Claude Garland, and you're on the home of the Canucks. Sportsnet 650. You're listening to Alpine Credits, Canucks Hockey on Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Own your home. Alpine Credits can get your loan approved. Alpine Credits homeowners get approved. Visit alpinecredits.ca. Brendan Bachelor and Randy Jando with you tonight from Rogers Arena. 941 left in the first period. Kings lead the Canucks 1-0 on a goal by Kevin Fiala. Faceoff coming up in the L.A. zone to our left in the near circle. Miller and Kopitar will contest the faceoff. Miller trying to win it to Zadorov, looking for a shot here. We'll see if he can do it. Kopitar thrown out of the circle, and now they'll change their alignment as Zadorov and Hironik switch sides, and it's Byfield against Miller on the faceoff now, and Miller wins it cleanly to Hironik, trying to wrist shot that was blocked from close range by Kempe. Game loose to Kopitar, who bats it out to center, and the Canucks have to regroup at their own line. Hironik throws it up the near side. It misses everyone. This will be icing against Vancouver. And the faceoff will come back into the Canucks zone. JT Miller directing traffic. He kind of reminds me of Peyton Manning going with the Omaha Omaha before the faceoff. But that's kind of what he's capable of doing. He's been very, very 
vocal on that front, not only in games, but in practices as well. When the coaches are not there before practice, if the power play unit is working, he's directing traffic uh, very much tonight as well. Miller with six points in his last six games prior to this one tonight. Up to 90 points on the season, leading the Canucks. And the fans chanting his name after that third period power play goal in the win over the Flames on Saturday. Canucks dump it behind the Kings net. Kopitar plays it around to the near corner for Adrian Kempe. Fires a quick pass to center for Quinton Byfield. Byfield to the Vancouver line. One on one with Heronic down the right. Spins to the point, then dumps it behind the Canuck net, and Patterson's back to it. Down low. Pushed into the end boards by Moore. Patterson throws it around to the near side for DiGiuseppe. Dumps it back behind his own net for Heronic. Chased down by Moore again in the far corner. Deneau's there too. And the puck squirts loose to Besser, and he plays it near side for DiGiuseppe, who chips it to the red line. Patterson into the L.A. zone. Nice pass right wing for Garland off the bench with a shot up high, and it was fought off. Good save by Cam Talbot to keep this a 1-0 game, and the Kings clear it back to the Canuck blue line. Myers in his own zone. Passes right wing to center for Niels Hoaglander. Drops to Quinn Hughes at his own line. Hughes. D to D to Myers with room. He'll skate it ahead himself. Gets to center. Dumps it in. Moore back to it near corner. Gave it away to Pedersen. Left wing side. Try to center and pass it. Hit the outside of the net. And Oman's after it on the right wing side. Niels Oman. Try to drop it right corner for Pedersen. Puck knocked away. Fiala gets it out. And Myers chips it loose to Hughes who darts back in on the left wing. Hughes carrying behind the Kings goal. Out the right wing side. Spins wide on the boards. Goes top of the point for Shooter with a long shot. Tipped by Oman and Talbot held it out again. Canucks starting to create a couple of more scoring opportunities here after struggling to get to the inside on the Kings for the majority of this first period. And it's starting with the forecheck. You win those battles. You create possession in the offensive zone. And eventually you start getting L.A. out of position. Todd Coles into the Kings line. Tried a long shot. Blocked by Dubois. Arvidsson's got it near wall. He's pushed to the boards by Pod Colson. Got it free to Lafferty with room in the slot. Wrist shot missed past the stick side of Talbot. And Pod Colson goes after it again. Left wing side. Chipped it loose to Ian Cole on the boards. Now to Lafferty. Carrying on the near wall. Gets around LaFerriere. Going to the goal. Lafferty to the forehead. He scores! No quit from Sam Lafferty as he takes it to the goal himself. And buries it past Cam Talbot to tie the game at one for the Canucks. Sam Lafferty showing off the motor on that play. First, Vasily Pod Colson takes the puck from Arvidsson along the boards, and then Lafferty picks it up. Goes for a little bit of a circle along the left boards and ends up going through about three LA Kings and beats LaFerriere, who's not even skating, just trying to get a stick on Lafferty. But Lafferty goes across Cam Talbot and beats him on the forehand to tie this game up. 12th goal of the year for Sam Lafferty and a big one for the Canucks at 12.50 of the first period. The time of the goal is brought to you by Crow, your trusted advisors for 55 years. Learn more at crowmackay.ca. The uh, line stays out there. Lafferty able to get it to center for McKay. Ships it ahead to Teddy Bluger, and he'll dump it into the Kings zone. Canucks will get a change now, and they were actually in the midst of a change there with Pod Polson and Lafferty out there together, but they combined well on the forecheck to eventually get the puck free and create that goal. Excellent support by Sam Lafferty on the initial forecheck by Vasily Pod Polson. Just going after the LA Kings and not allowing them to get the puck out of the zone. Miller dumps it behind the Kings net. Talbot plays it to the near side. Miller on the forecheck, battling with Doughty. Got it loose, gave it away to Besser. Back to the line for Heronic. Wrist shot stopped by Talbot. Big rebound to the far circle. Collected and cleared down the ice by Adrian Kempe. And this will be icing against Los Angeles with 6-10 remaining in the first period. And the Canucks and Kings tied at one. Don't miss out on the best show in town at a Vancouver Warriors lacrosse game. Lock in your seat at Rogers Arena for as little as $25 at tickets.vancouverwarriors.com. And that was a hungry play by Sam Lafferty, who ended up taking the puck on the left-hand side, not too far away from the blue line, looping across the boards into the middle of the ice and just outskated, outworked the Ferrier. Canucks win the draw. Sadora with a one-timer top of the point. Blockered away by Talbot. And Anze Kopitar lifts it to center, but Patterson breaks it up on the back check. Goes left wing for Hoaglander. Back into the offensive end, getting around Anderson to the front of the goal. Puck checked by Talbot, and it just rolled wide into the far corner. 
Garland after it down low, battling for the puck with Kopitar. Anderson and Hoaglander are in there too. Anderson centers for Kempe, who gets it up the near wall and out to center ice. Aronik ahead to Patterson, swept it into the slot, out of the reach of Garland, rolls in on Talbot, he'll throw it up the far wall. And Philip Deneau gets it out to center. Beats Pedersen to the loose puck on the right wing and clears it into Vancouver territory. Hughes spinning in the near corner, floats it up the boards. Pedersen tips it to Bob Colson. Now for Oman, left wing into the King's zone, centering pass. Myers was going to the net, but couldn't catch up to the puck to tip it on target. Bob Colson on the back chip. Wins a battle to get it free. Hughes tried to pass. It bounced off a skate in deep. And Matt Roy is hammered into the end boards by Oman on the four check. McKayev as the second wave. Gets it free to Suter left corner. Drops it to Oman, driving the net. Knocked down by Roy. McKayev has it behind the goal. Tied up by Deneau on the end boards. And Philip Deneau does a great job separating from the puck. Getting it loose to Fiala, but he can't clear the zone. And Suter dumps it back in. Roy in the near corner as Fiala and Suter continue to push and shove away from the play. Kings clear it to the Vancouver line, and here's Quinn Hughes back to center. Hughes pokes it past Deneau into the left corner. Dumps it behind the net. Bluger's after it right wing side. Let's it go to McKayev. Liam McKayev pushed to the boards by LaFerriere. McKayev protecting the puck down low, still with it along the wall, trying to carry up the right wing side. Gets to the top of the circle, spins it behind the net. Bluger taken down by England in a battle as they went to the puck. They both end up on the ice. It's underneath them. Lafferty trying to get it loose. He's pinned to the boards by Spence. Now it comes free to Ian Cole, right wing side, battling with Victor Arvidsson, who banks it off the boards back to the Canuck line, and Quinn Hughes is back to it under pressure from LaFerriere. Hughes quickly to the Kings line on left wing. Dumped it past Spence. Skates on to the corner. Is hit hard by Arvidsson. But plays it around to the right wing side for JT Miller. And now we get a penalty signaled behind the play. A slash called by referee Tom Shimoleski. And it's Quinn Hughes going off. And the Kings to the power play when we return. 3.56 left in the first. It's a one-all tie. Vancouver and Los Angeles on Alpine Credits, Canucks Hockey, streaming on the Sportsnet app and along the Sportsnet radio network. It's time for the BCHL Minute. The BC Hockey League currently has 404 alumni playing NCAA Division I hockey, 278 college-committed athletes playing in the league, with many more expected, and nine players selected at the 2023 NHL Draft, including first-rounders Matthew Wood and Bradley Nadeau. Even with all of these accomplishments, according to BCHL Commissioner Stephen Cocker, the future looks even brighter for the league. The league's going to continue to get better and, and get stronger. And that comes down from the, the athlete perspective. We want to continue to build on what the foundation of this league is, which is a development league for NCAA athletes. And we want to continue to grow that player pool and continue to give those athletes more resources to aid in their development. And when the league gets stronger, the athletes are able to come into a better development league and, and push themselves to get better. The BCHL is Modern Hockey. Alpine News Network is here live with one of our superheroes. I just helped Tom with a business loan. He needed to soup up his mechanic shop. Not to brag, but I once modified a car to match my ultra speed. It went so fast, it broke the speed of sound. At least no one was inside. I hope no one was inside. I guess I'll just stick to approving business loans. Own your home? Need a loan? Alpine Credits can help. Alpine Credits, where homeowners get approved. Hey, this is Patrick Demko. CC with a one-timer. Good save by Demko down low. Rebound chance for Evander Kane. Demko stopped that, too. And you're on the home of the Canucks. Sportsnet Radio Network. Get your tickets for the Canucks online 50-50 draw. Go to Canucks.com slash 50-50 to enter. Ticket sales close at the end of the second intermission. Must be 19 plus and located in BC at the time of purchase to play. Know your limit. Play within it. 3.56 left in the first period. Canucks and Kings tied at one. Brendan Batchelor and Randeep Janda with you. And it's a Los Angeles power play with Quinn Hughes in the box for a slash just before the break. Kings are 13th in the league on the man advantage this year, but the Canucks win the faceoff in their own zone. Myers cleared it to the near point. Fiala bats it back deep, and Ian Cole finds it and clears it all the way down on Cam Talbot in the Kings' goal. And on that penalty call, there's been about 10 plays like that in that first period where players are slashing each other on the back of the skate, on the back of the leg. Feels like the referees want to maybe manage this game a little bit and say, all right, cut that out. 
As Ian Cole again able to clear it all the way down the ice after the Canucks break up the Kings entry. And Drew Doughty takes it back behind his own goal, leaving for Adrian Kempe. Kempe accelerates to center on left wing, skates across the Vancouver blue line, rims it around the end boards to Arvidsson right corner. He's tied up by Ian Cole along the wall. Di Giuseppe gets it free to Myers behind the net, gets his head up and fires it all the way down. A bouncer on Talbot that he had to get down into the butterfly to block. Canuck penalty killer is able to change. A minute left in the L.A. power play. Just under three minutes remaining first period. Canucks and Kings are tied at one. Philip Deneau, right wing to center, plays it up the boards. Byfield missed it. Hironic gets it down low. And again, it's a full 200-foot clear for the Canucks. No nonsense on, nonsense on both of those players. Tyler Myers first, Philip Hronick just turn and fire down the ice. A couple for me and Cole before that, too, as the Kings dump it in. They were looking for the Sedinary bank play off the end boards, but the Canucks were wise to it, and as Spence hadn't reached center when he dumped it in, it's icing against Los Angeles on the power play. It's the opposition. You can't try that in the uh, the Rogers Arena. Come on. This is it's the ice that the Sedins tried it in. It's where it's been mastered, but the Canucks have done a good job of not allowing... The Kings have set up in the defensive zone. They've been winning those puck battles. And as you mentioned, just firing the puck down the ice. Face off in the Los Angeles end to our left. One by the Kings. Spence has it near corner. There's a backhand pass middle of the ice. Left wing to center for Philip Deneau. Deneau to the red line. Tried to dump it in. It's batted down by Zadorov. But deflected into the near corner. And Byfield's after it down low. It comes to Dubois. Back to Spence. Top of the point. Now to Dubois. Right circle with room. Takes a shot. Stopped by to Smith. Rebound cleared from the front of the net by Hironic. Now Dubois again fans on a one-timer off the right wing. Zadorov plays it behind the goal. Moore trying to cut out front. Knocked down by Hironic, but Byfield gets it. Power play is about to expire. Spence lifts it into the left corner. Deneau trying to chip it behind the net. Was tied up by Zadorov. And Hughes is back onto the ice. Moore from behind his own goal. Backhand pass to the far side for Deneau. Then it was tipped to the near post. Byfield tried to tuck it home between his legs, but missed. And Bluger trying to escape the zone was knocked down by Deneau. Fans want a penalty. The officials don't agree. And Quinn Hughes settles things down in his own end as the Canucks complete a change. Hughes to G.T. Miller, driving to center on the left wing. Dumps it into the near corner and goes after Roy on the forecheck. Hits him into the end boards. Puck comes free far side. Gavrikov got it to the line and out to center. Lazat with it left wing. For Lewis, carries deep into the Canuck end. Rims it around to the near wall. Big collision between Miller and Roy. And the Canucks come up with the pocky and Cole fans on a clearing attempt. Roy holds in right point. Down the near wall for Lewis. Hit into the end boards and knocked down by Ian Cole. A big check from the Canuck defenseman and they're able to clear to center. Besser gets it out to the red line on right wing. The Ferriere. Pressured by Di Giuseppe. Flips it to the Canuck blue line. Lazat skates onto it. Into the Vancouver zone. Wide far boards. Cuts away from Besser. Is tied up by Pedersen. Puck comes loose to Ian Cole down low. Got it far side. Pedersen gave it away to Kempe who spun and fired a backhander wide of the net. Niels Hoaglander flips it to the red line. Pedersen drops it down. Controls the puck and dumps it in on the backhand. Garland on the forecheck. It's Anderson into the end boards. Doughty gets it behind his own net with 25 seconds left in this first period. Kempe with a heavy pass. Right wing to center for Anderson. Gains the Vancouver line. Drops to Kopitar. Stood up by Hoaglander on the near boards. Anze Kopitar skates down the wall. Drops it to Kempe. Now to the top of the point for Doughty. Left wing side. Arvidsson fanned on a one-timer. It missed the net. But Kempe recovers it on the right wing. Kopitar trying to center and pass into the slot. Broken up by Myers. Gets it to Pedersen. He'll skate to the red line and dump it in on Talbot as the period comes to a close. Canucks ahead on the shot clock after one. But the scoreboard reads 1-1 Vancouver and L.A. tonight at Rogers Arena. A physical start to this game, playoff style, where there's some animosity here in the opening 20 minutes. But the Vancouver Canucks fell behind in this game after Fiala scored. But Sam Lafferty in an excellent individual play where he finishes off the play. But Vasily Pod Colson with an aggressive forecheck. And the Vancouver Canucks very much. This is a, an even fight thus far as L.A. has responded with some ozone time themselves. Should be a good one here over 40 minutes. Time for Canucks Central at the intermission. Brought to you by Play Now Sports. Know your face-off from your playoffs. You're ready to play now. Learn more at playnow.com slash radio. Let's join Bick Nazar and Dan Riccio. This is Canucks Central at the intermission on the official home of the Canucks. 
Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Arvidsson's got it near wall. He's pushed to the boards by Pod Colson. Got a free to Lafferty with room in the slot. Wrist shot missed past the stick side of Talbot. And Pod Colson goes after it again, left wing side. Shift it loose to Ian Cole on the boards. Now to Lafferty. Carrying on the near wall. Gets around LaFerriere. Going to the goal. Lafferty to the forehead. He scores! No quit from Sam Lafferty as he takes it to the goal himself. And buries it past Cam Talbot to tie the game at one for the Canucks. His 12th of the year, making it 1-1. What a goal for the Vancouver Canucks and LA Kings, and that's how the period finishes. Welcome to Canucks Central at the intermission on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Bick Nazar and Dan Riccio and highlight real stuff from Sam Lafferty. It was an unbelievable goal. The way that he just drops the shoulder, gets around LaFerriere, and takes it all the way to the net. It was almost just like uh, the LA Kings were, were stunned to see somebody attacking their goal in the moment, but Lafferty just took the space they gave him. Whatever was presented to him, he took it and skated right into the space and all the way to the far post and tucks it past a sprawling Talbot. And uh, Sam Lafferty joins us outside the Canucks locker room now here in the first intermission. Uh, Sam, you open the scoring for your team. Uh, take us through the goal. Yeah, I think it started with a really good forecheck by Podsy, and I think a couple times he won battles and puck just kind of came to me. So um, just all around hardworking forecheck. Hard working. That was like one of the nicest goals at Rogers Arena this year. It was. Uh, it just seemed like they they gave you the space and you took what, exactly what they gave you there. Yeah, it was uh, the line before us uh, warmed down and, and set us up. So um, I think their guys maybe been a little worn down and. Um, you know, they won the battles, and puck just kind of came to me. It's uh, the third game in 25 days you've played this L.A. Kings team. We saw an early scrum on the second shift, basically. Is is the animosity starting to build against these guys? Yeah, both teams know what's at stake here. It's uh, obviously a huge rival, big division game, and um, it's probably going to escalate from here. Sam, uh, we, we really appreciate it. Uh, good goal, and best of luck the rest of the way. Thanks. It's uh, Sam Lafferty joining us outside the Canucks locker room humble. in a 1-1 Canucks and Kings scoreline. And, yeah, that was very humble. Hardworking. <laughs> hardworking. Uh, humble. Just uh, That was a seat-raising goal right there. The puck just came to me. The, the guys uh, on the shift before us uh, put, a, you know, put them on their heels. Just like always crediting the teammates. That's classic, good stuff. Classic hockey guy, but awesome goal from uh, Well, let's go through Sam it Lafferty. because Vasily Putkolzin deserves a ton of credit, and he was quick to mention uh, the, the effort by Putkolzin because look, seconds the before uh, Lafferty scores the goal, I just I, I look over at you and I say, Pod's a shot out of a cannon It tonight. was unbelievable because yeah. he's behind the net. He's actually coming from the far corner on a puck that gets rimmed around yeah. to Victor Arvidsson. So even when the puck is pretty close to Arvidsson, who mishandled it really briefly, but Colson's behind the net. He's got a lot of space to make up, and he's charging with great speed, and he gets there along the wall, pins Arvidsson, gets that puck. He, he kind of comes away with it stumbling, and Lafferty's there to clean it up, and it's a slot shot for Sam Lafferty coming downhill, misses the net, and you think, all right, this line, maybe that's the best chance they get. Spend your 45 and get out. And but Colson retrieves it, wins yeah. another battle. Ian Cole steps up, who I think should get an assist on this play. They haven't credited to him, but I think he does uh, close the gap on the Ferriere and, and taps it to Lafferty. And then Lafferty kind of spins around and does a turn around the Ferriere and put Colson's in front of the net. After all yeah. this, he's got Gavrikov on his back, pinned to the outside of the lane, and it's Sam Lafferty that kind of snakes his way through there. Yeah, it's. Uh just a great team goal, right? Like, there's so many plays away from the puck that happen that lead up to it, right? And that's uh, what often the coach talks about so often. But Lafferty just found himself a lane. The way that he drops his shoulder around the ferry air, gets down the left wing, takes it on his backhand towards the net, and then it's, it's almost like the seas part for him to skate to the net, take it across the goal, and put it past Cam Talbot. Uh, as good a goal as you'll see at Rogers Arena this year. 
650, 650. Keep coming in with your thoughts. We'll get to your submissions and also to the live betting lines in just a moment. Canucks did concede the first goal of the game, so it breaks their streak of seven in a row with the first goal. But, of course, they do equalize later on in the period. But let's get to the Kevin Fiala goal, which opened it up, because this comes off the power play. Yes. Where the Canucks slowed up with uh, the last 10 seconds of the, the power play. They go with the lotto line. Knowing There's a face-off with 10 seconds left yeah. in the power play. In the O zone. In the O zone. So they go lotto line with Myers and Hughes. So it's not Suter out there. But nevertheless, situationally, I thought, okay, that's a great thing for Rick Tockett to, to load up on this last. If you win the draw, you get a handful of seconds there. Why not do it? The whole shift kind of goes. They don't really generate much. And there's a D change. Hughes goes D to D with Myers. He swings it across to uh, Brock Besser, who takes off the backhand not too cleanly and has to make a play, goes up the wall, doesn't even get into the blue line. And suddenly the puck's going back the other way. But you were quick to point this out to me because it, it's just one of those things you take for granted that, look, yeah. oh, yeah, the D to D is going to change. Uh, they missed one. Quinn Hughes goes off the ice. Nobody comes on for Quinn Hughes. And... I know they made the recent change. You can't uh, be halfway jumping onto the ice. But nobody jumps onto the ice for Hughes yeah. at all. The Canucks, now, when the goal is scored, have four players on the ice, and they are not on the penalty kill. Now, Myers goes off first, yeah. and Cole jumps on. Yes. So it's the lefty jumping on for a righty, and then Hughes goes off. And so maybe you would assume it's Susie yeah. who's supposed to jump on for with the pairing with Ian Cole. But... Something got jumbled there. Yeah. Because it's not as if Hughes and Cole are like for like switches because of the. Yes. Or sorry, Hughes. Yeah. He, Hughes and Cole, I guess, would be like for like, but uh, Myers and Susie should be the ones that you see. Yeah. Whatever happened, I don't know. Well, hopefully somebody asked it after the game uh, to, to Rick Tockett because you just. You don't see that happen. And, and there's a couple of other things, you know. Brock is uh, at the end of a shift. The he, dump in wasn't too clean. Yeah, yeah, kind of a soft play in the neutral zone, and he ends up turning it over. L.A. is back on him, and he is slow to react, lets a player get beyond him. But he's also expecting there to be two defensemen behind him. Certainly. Um, and there isn't. So that's that's also a problem uh, for, for the Vancouver Canucks. But you can say that... Uh, I wonder if Rick Tockett would call that one a freebie for, for the L.A. Kings. I, th I think uh, you would call that one a freebie. We'll hear what he has to say in the post-game show as well uh, with plenty of your reaction as well. 6.50, 6.50. Yeah, just an odd one. And the power play, they get the first penalty on a Kempe penalty in the corner where he kind of hits Susie in the back. Kind of a penalty, kind of not really. Susie sold it a little bit. The thing is, there wasn't really a penalty in the corner either, but they give that one on Hughes. Yeah. So it, it, it evens out, as we always say. It eventually evens out. Uh, but the Canucks on the power play, I thought, set up really well. They win the opening faceoff, set up pretty quickly on the next entry as well, but didn't generate much. No. Um, you know, Miller makes a, a pass into the, the bumper looking for Suter, and you know, the other night when, when they were whipping it around against Buffalo on, on Tuesday, last Tuesday, you're like, wow, Miller can do anything he wants against this Buffalo Sabres team. L.A. was much quicker to, to close down any passing lanes that may have been open there for Miller. So he forces one into Suter, and they don't get much of a shot off. There's a bit of a scramble. Something kind of comes out of that. But they don't get anything clean off. And there's one moment they try to get Pedersen set up for a one-timer. Looks like they have it. But... Hughes' pass is a little too much in the skates for Pe for Petey, and he's he's unable to take it clean, and it ends up going beyond him. But as we always say, you know, that's what makes uh, Alex Ovechkin so special in all these years scoring those those power play goals. Didn't matter where you set him up for, for the one-timer. He always found a way to contort his body in a way that he was able to get a pretty good shot away. But uh, you see it's not the easiest thing in the world for others to do the same. It is uh, Canuck Central at the intermission on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Let's look at the betting odds brought to you by Play Now Sports, the official sports betting partner of the Vancouver Canucks. Live money line odds for the LA Kings is 2.05. For the Vancouver Canucks, 1.73, which means a $10 bet on the Kings live money line odds has a potential total payout of 2050 and a $10 bet on the Canucks live money line odds has a potential total payout of 1730. 
taking a look at the inbox. A lot of love for Vasily Podkolzin coming yep. in. Uh, he's a beast from the east. And a lot of love for the Canucks physicality. 19 hits in that period uh, well ahead of the LA Kings. 11 hits. And it's uh, your typical candidates. It's Philip Peronik. It is Sam Lafferty and Vasily Podkolzin uh, chipping in with two himself. Four for the other two guys. This is a carryover from the last couple of games. The Montreal game, they had 40 hits that night. The Buffalo game, Quinn Hughes steps up and lays a big hit on Victor Olofsson. Saturday night, there's multiple big hits. Zadorov with a couple of big ones. And tonight, they've just carried on through. Uh, Ian Cole just pasted Trevor Lewis in the Canucks defensive end. Peter Zadorov dropping Blake Lazard. By the way, I misspoke. It's it's JT Miller with four, not Philip Ronick, and Garland's got three. And JT is just being JT and doing JT things, going and hitting everything that moves, finishing every check that he possibly can. It's It really goes back to Tockett saying that they haven't put it into fourth and fifth gear yet. And ever since he said that, you've seen this team up their physicality, really committing to finishing their checks and making things difficult, painful for the opposition. They're not the biggest team. Certainly they're missing Joshua, but that doesn't mean players can't lay the body when they have the opportunity to, and the Canucks are taking absolutely every opportunity right now. Yeah, that's what Jeffro is saying. 19 hits in the first period. Is this the Tockett effect? Uh, alluding to uh, it's, it's definitely a talking effect you know when he challenges his team they seem to to hear it quite a bit right and uh, after that washington game he sent a pretty firm challenge out and they've re- they've responded ever since uh listen on the radio sounded like put colson was the uh, devil reincarnate on lafferty's goal loving his play lately i hope he is here to stay we talked about that battle for the 12 forward with pdg now in and I, I, honestly he's in pole position right he, now. it's it's by him by quite a measure i think yeah because he's doing all these things and many people are quick to point out marcus and gibson's it's Put Colson's box out in front of the net that creates the Lafferty goal. Absolutely the play we discussed earlier. Keep coming in with a thought. 650-650. First intermission brought to you by Play Now Sports. You're ready to play now. Get a $20 free bet at playnow.com slash radio. Must be 19 plus to play. Conditions apply. 650-650. Uh, uh, some thoughts uh, coming in. What's the status on Dakota Joshua? Just really quickly. Uh, he's back on the ice practicing in a non-contact jersey. Yep. We'll see where that goes here in the coming days, but certainly the step in the right direction you want to see. I can't imagine he's too far away. If he practiced in a non-contact yesterday, um, could be a chance that we see Joshua as early as Thursday against the Dallas Stars after another practice. Shots are 9-6 in favor of your Vancouver Canucks with a scoreline tied at 1 against the LA Kings, the teams they're getting very familiar with. We'll see if the physicality and the animosity continues. Through the next 40 minutes, Bick Nazar, Dan Riccio back after 40. Brendan Batchel, Randy Janda on the way here on Canuck Central at the action on the Sportsnet Radio Network. How many emails, text messages, notifications for calendar reminders of meetings you don't want to go to are all waiting for you to deal with right now? Well, your legendary escape from it all awaits. The number five orange is open right now. That's a meeting invite worth accepting. Pre-game, post-game, even during the game. The number five orange. March 28th on Sportsnet. The wait is finally over. Here we go. The Blue Jays are back. It's go time. Batter up. And Guerrero delivers. This is how you play the game, folks. Toronto touches down in Tampa for the season opener. That's the way to get the party started. The boys of summer are ready. Are you? Home run for Blue Jays, Rays, March 28th on Sportsnet. Coverage begins 12 Pacific. Your business is more than just numbers. It's years of hard work, dreams, and passion. But in the midst of the hustle, have you taken the time to understand its true worth? Crow's trusted advisors can help. With global expertise across a wide variety of industries, let Crow uncover the real value of your business. Redefine your company's success. Visit chromakai.ca to learn more. Crow. Smart decisions. Lasting value.
Rock climb at the epic Skaha Bluffs. Or bike the over 100 trails of Three Blind Mice and the Kettle Valley Rail Trail. When outdoor adventures are what you're looking for this spring, Penticton, B.C. is home to it all. Rock climbing, mountain biking, hiking, golfing, kayaking, and more. The options are endless, and the views are incredible. Plus, don't forget to take a break at one of the many wineries or the eight craft breweries that call Penticton home. Discover B.C.'s mecca of adventure. Head to visitpenticton.com. Waypoint Insurance has been here for over 150 years, seeking and sourcing ways to fill your home with safety, comfort, and peace of mind. They travel the same roads, trek the same trails, and make their way through life's adventures, setting their sights on a life worth living. Because this is Waypoint's home, their playground, their livelihood. So go explore. From business to home to auto to personal insurance, Waypoint has your back. Waypoint Insurance, together protecting what you love. Visit waypoint.ca. It's time to reinvent, reimagine, redefine, and refresh your spring style at TFC. Find your flow from new arrivals and the latest accessories to designer brands that make fashion a breeze. Shop it all with five interest-free easy pay payments. Embrace your style and celebrate all things spring. Shop exciting offers every day at tfc.ca. Taxi! Yellow Cab Vancouver is your go-to for a safe and affordable ride anytime. Secure your ride back by downloading the all-new Yellow Cab app and book your prepaid rides. And right now, you can use promo code 2024YELLOW to receive 10% off your next trip. That's promo code 2024YELLOW. Thanks, bud. Download the Yellow Cab Vancouver app on iOS or Android and book your ride today. Or visit yellowcabonline.com. That's yellowcabonline.com. Tuesday. This is the Million Dollar Season! Canada's Got Talent is back. It's a- With the biggest season yet, this year's winner will receive a life-changing $1 million. The largest prize in Canadian TV history. All thanks to Rogers. This is the biggest season on the biggest show in Got Talent history. Canada's Got Talent. The Million Dollar Season. All new Tuesday, 8, 7 central on City TV or streaming on City TV+. Plus. Hey, this is Connor Garland. It's 4-0 Canucks with 6.41 left in the second. And you're on the home of the Canucks. Sportsnet Radio Network. Welcome back to Rogers Arena. Brendan Batchelor and Randy Jando with you tonight. Canucks and Kings tied at one after one. And we'll head to the second period momentarily. Thanks for joining us along the Sportsnet Radio Network tonight. Whether you're in Mount Pleasant, McKenzie, or wherever you're tuning in, we appreciate you spending your evening with us. Let us know where you're listening from. You can reach me at Batch Hockey. He is at Randy Janda. Our flagship, st- flagship station, I should say, is at Sportsnet650. You can find all of those handles on Instagram, TikTok, and the social media platform formerly known as Twitter and Randy. Sam Lafferty got the Canucks on the board in the first period to tie the game at one, but Vasily Podkolzin did some very good work leading up to the goal. Along the walls, Vasily Podkolzin doing work, and remember, at the beginning of the year, Rick Taco was saying, we need more wall guys. Well, I would say at this point, Vasily Podkolzin is that guy. Two hits in the first period in just over three minutes of ice time, and a real physical presence on that goal, but throughout the first period where there's a couple of plays, LA Kings players looking over their shoulder and seeing if 92's coming, and on one of the plays, One of the wingers just backed off and gave up the puck, which tells you the opposition knows how hard he can hit, and that makes an impact not only in a regular season game, but if he's playing like that in the playoffs, you better believe the opposition knows he's on the ice. Bob Colson now up to 35 hits, playing his 10th game in the NHL this season since being recalled from AHL Abbotsford. Kings to the Vancouver line. Byfield on the left wing. Forced to the boards by J.T. Miller. Puck is tied up on the wall. Canucks in black going from left to right. The Kings in white skating from right to left. Shot of the line by Anderson. Stopped by DeSmith. Rebound in the crease. Cleared by Hironik around the near boards and back out to center ice. Dowdy gets it from Anderson at his own line. Plays it up the far boards to Kopitar. He sweeps it to center for Adrian Kempe. Into the Vancouver zone. Kempe trying to make a move in the slot. Left the puck behind. Besser drops it back to Hironik. Far boards for Zadorov. And then again to Besser to center. He was poke checked by Byfield at the red line. Lost the puck and the Kings have it back again. Deneau passes back into his own zone for Roy. Again to Philip Deneau. 
Right wing at center, trying to pass ahead, broken up by Hughes. Here come the Canucks. Hughes left wing, into the King's zone. Delane, into the high slot. Spins back, top of the point, far side. Myers with a one-time shot blocked by Moore. Myers gets it back, dumps it behind the net for Garland. Out the right wing side, attempted a backhand centering feed. Was tipped wide of the net. Hoaglander gets it down low in the corner. Pushed to the boards by Gavrikov. He falls to the ice. Puck comes free right wing side. Pedersen chips it deep, and Roy spins it around the zone, but Myers holds in. Left point. Tyler Myers chips it back down the wall. Connor Garland battling for the puck. Deneau gets it out to center. Garland dumps it back in, and the Canucks will change. Another example, when Connor Garland does generally, occasionally, excuse me, lose the puck, he wins it back immediately. LaFerriere to the Vancouver line on left wing. Forced to the boards by Susie. Mikheyev back to get the puck. Passes behind his own net for Teddy Bluger. Bluger drops it near corner for Tyler Myers. He'll bank it up the right wing for the Vancouver goal scorer, Sam Lafferty, who got it out to center but lost the puck. Dubois sends right wing for Arvidsson. Going to the goal with a toe drag. Great play by Myers. Sprawling to the ice to poke the puck off the stick of Arvidsson before he could get a shot free. And the Canucks clear it back down the ice. England in his own zone. Threw it up the near boards. Laferriere missed it. Bluger's got it right wing. Centering pass for below the goal line was tipped to the near post. Talbot held it out. England takes it behind his own net and clears it out of the zone only as far as Pew Suter. Suter played it to Ian Cole. Threw it back up the left wing. Neil Zoman tipped it in. Chases down England to the forecheck. England fired it to the right point. Ian Cole couldn't hold in. Pierre Luc Dubois dumps it to the Canuck line and Hironic has it deep in his own zone. Quickly to center for Pew Suter. Chips it near boards for Oman, broken up by Anderson. But Suter gets it back and lifts it off the glass into the King's end. Drew Doughty takes the puck behind his own goal. Forced far corner by Suter. Doughty goes back to Mikey Anderson. Now left wing to center for Trevor Moore. Moore scampers to the Canuck line, floats it in onto Smith, who covers it in the crease and gets the whistle. 3.05 into the second period. The Canucks and the Kings are tied at one. And a couple of chances for the L.A. Kings as Mikey Anderson initially shot a puck from the left-hand side. It hit the stick of Casey DeSmith and made it kind of spin around and almost wasn't the most comfortable save for Casey DeSmith. And right after that, in transition, Tyler Myers, using the long stick that he has in the long reach, as he had gone to ground, stretches out to make an excellent defensive play on Arvidsson. Defensive zone faceoff win for the Canucks. Zadorov clears it out of the zone. It's played back in by Anderson, and the Kings are adjudged to be offside. So we'll have another faceoff in neutral ice. Jack 96 9 is playing whatever. Rock, pop, hip hop, 80s, 90s, the greatest hits of all time. They've got it all. Just tell your smart speaker to play Jack 96 9. There's usually a thought that Nikita Zadorov and Tyler Myers have the longest stick in the Canucks locker room because they're the taller guys. Connor Garland a couple of days ago mentioned that it's actually Carson Soucy. So you'd think it's the six foot eight, six foot nine guy or six foot six guy, excuse me, in Nikita Zadorov, but susie has got the longest stick uh, when it comes to the defensive unit. I thought you were going to say Garland has the longest no, stick. No, I was like, that can't be. <laughs> no offense to Connor Garland. He provided the intel. We stand a short king, as they say. And Philip Herodic takes it behind his own net for the Canucks. He's 5'8", by the way. He was saying the websites are wrong. He's not 5'10". Herodic to center. Fires it in on Talbot. Drops it back into play. But Doughty's stripped of the puck by Miller on the forecheck. JT Miller to the line for Heronic. One-timer blocked in front. And Doughty gets it out to center for Adrian Kempe, who banks it on the backhand into the Canucks zone. Heronic hit into the end boards by Byfield. They'll battle for the puck behind the Vancouver goal. Kopitar in to help out. Pushed to the wall by Di Giuseppe. Got it up the near side. Moverara dumps it back in deep. Kopitar plays to the line. Kempe can't hold in, and he's got to take it back into his own end. Adrian Kempe leaves near side for Andre Kopitar. He'll play behind his own goal to Moverara. Up the far side for Matt Roy, who flips it to center. Knocked down by Hughes for Pedersen. Stick handling in traffic. Makes a nice feed back to Hughes in his own zone. Again to Pedersen. Right wing into the King's zone with room. Pedersen right by pass. Looking for Garland. It was tipped to the boards. Hughes struggles to control it and has to take it back to center under pressure from Philip Deneau. Hughes ahead to Pedersen. Plays it back to Hughes. Left wing. Floats it into the King's end. And Matt Roy has it. In his own zone, trying to pass to center. Trevor Moore missed it. Myers has it in his own line. Chased deep by Philip Deneau. He'll lift it off the glass to center. Alvarar plays ahead for Deneau. Now for Moore into the Vancouver end. 
Price to the left wing corner. Plays a backhand pass into the slot. Tipped away by Bluger to the far wall. Deneau's after it down low. Got it to Arvidsson. Back to the right point for Spence. Hit by Lafferty as he dumped it. Hughes gets it free down low. Passes near corner for Teddy Bluger. And he'll flip it high in the air to the Kings' blue line. Gloved down by England, who's knocked down by Lafferty. But cleared it ahead. Myers with the puck to McKeon. Driving into the Kings' zone on left wing. Around Spence. Carries it behind the L.A. net. Out the right wing side. To the near point for Susie. He'll rim it around the end boards again. Luger across on the far side. Can't get to the puck. Arvidsson got it out of the zone. McKeon tried to play it back in. Now Spence leaves in his own end for Arvidsson. And he'll wind to center. And gain the Vancouver line on left wing. Arvidsson leaves for Laferriere, hit into the boards by Suter. Plays it up the near side. Niels Olmont wins a battle with Laferriere to carry it right wing to center and play it off the glass and in deep. Almost six minutes gone, second period. Canucks and Kings tied at one. Suter on the forecheck right corner. Plays it to Susie at the near point. Susie dumps it back in behind the L.A. net. Anderson hit by Pod Colson. Plays it free to Byfield on the right wing and he'll chip it off the boards to the Canuck blue line. Philip Peronic in his own zone. Quick pass right wing for Suter. Into the King's end. Uh, Colson driving the net. Suter tried a shot. It was blocked by Anderson. And now Trevor Lewis leads the rush back to center. Lewis driving into the Vancouver end. Wide on the left wing. Attempted to go to the front of the goal. Lost the puck. Comes right side for Doughty. Low shot stopped by the Smith. Puck is loose at the side of the net. And the Canuck goaltender is able to cover it and get the whistle with a big crowd forming. And some tempers boiling over too. As Pod Colson and Heronic were after Byfield at the side of the net. 6-16 into the second period. It's a one-all tie. The Canucks and the Kings on Alpine Credits. Canucks Hockey on Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Mark's This Is Big event is on now. Until March 27th, save up to 60% on a wide selection of styles perfect for spring, including silver jeans and clothing at 40% off. Mark's This Is Big event on now at Mark's and Mark's.com. In today's modern world, there are still a few time-honored traditions in one's life. Things that are a rite of passage. Your grandfather would have experienced this. And certainly, your father was there. And now, it's your turn for a legendary time. Pre-game, post-game, even during the game. The number five orange. Hi, this is Kirk McLean. When I'm not on the ice, I look for luxury, style, and of course, an exceptional drive. I found everything in my GV80 from Genesis Richmond. I invite you to experience one for yourself. Lease the Genesis GV80 SUV from only 3.9% with all-inclusive pricing as low as $76,000. Visit Genesis Richmond at the Richmond Auto Mall or at genesisrichmond.ca today. Open road. Unlimited possibilities ahead. White Spots Turkey Dinner is back. Treat your family to the great taste of the traditional turkey dinner with all the fixins, or pre-order their heat and serve dinner for two and enjoy it when you want it. Only available until April 1st. Visit whitespot.ca for details. Hey, this is JT Miller, and you're on the home of the Canucks, Sportsnet 650. 616 into the second period tonight in Vancouver. It's the Canucks and the Kings tied at one. Enjoy a good selly? You're ready to play now. Get your $20 free bet at playnow.com slash radio. Must be 19 plus to play. Conditions apply. Not a lot of space out there on the ice in this second period. The shots are two to one in the middle frame in favor of LA. And we got a face off in the Canucks end to our left in the far circle, JT Miller. Wins it from Andre Kopitar. Back to the corner for Nikita Zadorov. Leaves behind his own net for Philip Peronik. Threw it up the near boards. Besser banks it off the wall and out to center. Drew Doughty. The pocket is own line. Leaves for Mikey Anderson. Left wing to Kempe. Into the Vancouver end. Top of the near circle with a wrist shot. Blocked by Heronik. It went wide to the net. Miller gets it far side. And the puck stripped off his stick by Byfield. Passes back to his own line for Mikey Anderson. Anderson leaves for Doughty in his own zone. Ahead to Kopitar. Back to Doughty. Plays a backhand pass near side for Anderson. He'll fire it ahead to the Vancouver line. Kopitar missed it. It rolls behind the net. Icing's waved off. Veronik first to it on the end boards. Clears it up the far side. Centers for Miller. Right wing to center for Besser. Dumps it into the left wing corner. Oaklanders after Doughty in the forecheck. Gets the puck in front for Pedersen going to the net. Puck was rolling. He couldn't get a clean shot free. Trevor Moore trying to clear the zone. Gave it away to Garland. 
Dropped it back to the far point. Hughes couldn't hold in under pressure from Deneau and leaves for Myers in his own end. Myers banks it up the right wing. Oglander missed the puck. Moore has it instead. Centers for Fiala. Carrying right wing side into the Canucks zone. Poke check by Pedersen. Puck comes to Myers behind the net. As a backhand pass far corner for Hughes. He goes up the left wing wall for Garland. Connor Garland clears it deep into the Kings zone. Skates onto it himself behind the Los Angeles net, but lost it to Philip Deneau. He plays it free for Matt Roy, and he'll go left wing to center for Trevor Moore, who gains the red line and dumps it in. AC to Smith out of the goal to handle. Fires it high around the glass far side. It's deflected back deep to Hughes, and he'll take it behind his own goal. Eight minutes gone, second period. Canucks and Kings tied at one tonight at Rogers Arena. Hughes dumps it behind the L.A. net. Delayed offside against the Canucks, so Gavrikov will have time to skate the puck ahead himself. Passes left wing to Arvidsson. He'll chip it deep into the Canucks zone. Susie chases it down on the end boards in his own. End. Goes near side for Ilya Mikheyev, and he lifts it on the backhand. Out to center for Laffer. Tried to sweep it ahead to Bluger. Pass was broken up by Anglin. Here's Arvidsson driving back in through the middle. Right wing for the Ferrier, then to Dudu Bois. Who tried to drop pass, but was forced to the boards by Susi. Puck rolls middle of the ice. Ian Cole passes loose to Lafferty, and he'll play it right wing to center for Teddy Bluger, who gains the line and dumps it in. Lafferty on the forecheck. Hits Jordan Spence into the end boards. Puck is underneath the fallen Kings defenseman. Lafferty digs it free. Right point, Ian Cole shoots wide of the net. Comes to Bluger, trying to wrap around. It's loose to the crease. Rebound chopped wide by Lafferty in front. Bluger right corner to Lafferty behind the net. Now to the right point for Ian Cole. Spins it down low to Bluger. Stick handling in the office behind the net. Teddy Bluger. Kings aren't forcing him, so he'll keep the puck. Now he goes left corner. Trying to pass into the slot for Oman. Broken up by Pierre-Luc Dubois, and he'll keep it for the Kings. Dubois, far boards for Spence. Left wing to center, Arvidsson. Tied up by Ian Cole, and Hugh Shooter gets it free. Back into the offensive end. Top of the right circle. Shooter drops to Myers. Man, on a one-timer. And Talbot kicked it to the far corner. Ian Cole charging down the left wing side. Holds into the line. Canucks completing a change with the Kings trying to break out. Arvidsson deflects it to Lewis. Left wing of the Canuck blue line. He dumps it into the near corner. It's Hughes on the forecheck, but Lewis falls to the ice, and Hughes comes away with the puck. Quinn Hughes, left wing to center for Vasily Pod Colson. Makes it past Dowdy. And skates onto it himself, left corner. Gets it behind the net for Besser. Now to Pod Colson. Out the right wing side, near point. Heronic with a heavy drive. He missed the net. And it comes back to Hughes at the left point. Hughes dumps it behind the net. It rims around to the right wing side. Heronic charging down the boards. Lazat poked it past him. Kempe gets it out of the zone. And Lewis dumps it into the Vancouver end. Quinn Hughes behind his own goal. Chased out the far side by Lewis. Passes to center for Phil DiGiuseppe. DiGiuseppe to the Kings. Blue line. Dumps it in on the left wing. Gets to it first on the forecheck. Plays back left point for Zadorov. Long wrist shot. Missed the net. Now Hironik's got it on the right wing side. Leaves it top of the circle for Garland. Played it down the boards. But Kopitar finds it and lifts it off the glass and out to center. And Bats, this is a playoff rehearsal. Very tight checking. Every inch of ice is fought for in the second period. Dowdy with the puck behind his own goal. Takes a hit from Di Giuseppe. Played it far side for Byfield. He can't clear. Ian Cole holds in left point. Dumps it onto the right wing wall. Anderson back to it. Chased down by Garland to the right wing corner. Pedersen there too, trying to dig it free. Played it loose up the boards, but Fiala breaks it up and he'll skate left wing to center and bank it to the Vancouver line. Susie on the back check. Plays it free for Hoagland. Lost it to Fiala as he tried to clear the zone. Kevin Fiala dumps it left corner. Ian Cole on the near side. Got it off the glass to the line, but not out. Fiala keeps it alive again. Dumps it around the zone. Garland far boards, tied up by Deneau. Gavrikov plays it behind the Canuck net. Ian Cole lays a hit on Fiala down low, knocked him to the ice. Canucks clear it to the near point, and it bounces off Matt Roy, who tried to hold it in, but it hit him in the leg and went out of play. 8.38 left in a fast-moving second period. The Canucks and the Kings are tied at one on Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey, streaming on the Sportsnet app and along the Sportsnet radio network. The race is on. Get ready for the rush on Sportsnet. It's getting close to playoff time. Here we go. This is the stretch drive. You cannot let down your guard. The time when every game and every point can make all the difference. If you get in, you can win. The rush to the playoffs is on. Don't miss all the NHL action on Sportsnet. Here for hockey. You will take this. Watch on Sportsnet or stream on Sportsnet Plus. Navigating the seas of business? The waves can be unpredictable and overwhelming. 
Stay on course with Crow's trusted advisors. From startups to seasoned enterprises, Crow offers advice that protects and strategies that succeed. Because every smart decision begins with expert advice. Visit crowmackay.ca to learn more. Crow. Smart decisions. Lasting value. Angry Otter Liquor. You're ready. Shop a top-of-the-line selection of ice-cold beer, incredible wine, and flavor-packed ciders. Plus a power play of spirits for any level of team spirit. Angry Otter Liquor has 31 premium shopping locations across BC. Here for you all season long. And of course, into the playoffs. Score big with Angry Otter Liquor and celebrate every win with the perfect drink. You don't have to be a member to shop with Angry Otter Liquor, but it pays to be one. Details at angryotterliquor.crs. This is Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey. On the official home of the Canucks, Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. You're listening to Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey on Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Own your home. Alpine Credits can get your loan approved. Alpine Credits homeowners get approved. Visit alpinecredits.ca. 8.38 left in the second period tonight in Vancouver. The Canucks and the Kings are tied at one. Brendan Batchelor alongside Randy Janda. Kings win a faceoff of the Vancouver zone to our left. Fiala, middle of the ice, passes right circle. Roy tried a low shot. It rolled wide to the net, and Teddy Bluger's got it near boards. Bluger to center, fires it left corner for Sam Lafferty. Makes a move away from Roy, driving behind the Kings' net. Now back to the line for Myers. Heavy slap shot stopped by Talbot. Rebound for McKay, and Talbot robbed him. Sliding across to his right with a tremendous pad save to keep it a one-all game. Now here's Hughes, right wing, trying to backhand shot. Blocked in front. Myers gets it high slot. Plays it to the near boards. Didn't have any teammates there, and Gavrikov banks it off the wall all the way down, but icing's waved off, and Myers goes back to it in his own end. Myers did have time, though. He kind of rushed that play. Plenty of time to look for another pass. Just kind of dumped it into the corner. Kings were caught scrambling after the scoring chance for Ilya Mikheyev, and we're all out of position. Canucks couldn't capitalize, but they're back in on the forecheck again. Hugh Suter charging after a puck left corner. Trying to get it free to Pod Colson behind the net. Comes back to Suter. He feeds the line for Ian Cole. Right point Carson Soucy. Spins it behind the net. Suter's got it down low. Protecting the puck from Drew Doughty. Suter right corner to Soucy at the line. Near half wall to Neil Zoma. Dumps it below the goal line again. Pod Colson hits Moverara into the end boards, but Doughty gets the puck free far side. Skates it up the wall himself and passes left wing to center out of the reach of Pierre-Luc Dubois. But it tipped off Susie and deep into the Vancouver zone. Susie laid a hit on Dubois. Kings get the puck free. England left point. Try to shot blocked from close range by Pod Polson. And that one hurt him. He still hasn't been able to get back to his feet. Now he is standing. And he's going to go slowly to the Canuck bench with Ian Cole setting up the breakout from behind his own goal. Cole chased out the near side by Trevor Moore. Leaves for Susie Farboards. Left wing to center for Oglander. And he deflected it into the LA end. Andreas England near side. Gets it up the wall for Moore. Battling with Susie at the Kings blue line. And Garland gets it free. Here's Garland with room right wing. Carries to the bottom of the circle. Behind the LA net. Hit into the end boards by England. But keeps the puck. Spins off the check. And goes back to Zadorov. Long wrist shot from the point. Was blocked by a crowd of bodies at the side of the net. And Trevor Moore passes right wing to center. For Trevor Lewis, deep into the Vancouver end, carries behind the Canuck goal, out the left wing side to the line for Gabrikov, one-timer, stopped by DeSmith in front. And it's turned over the glass and out of play, and Heronik and Lazat with some gloved punches for each other at the top of the Vancouver crease, and the linesmen will get in and earn their pay. Plenty of animosity in this one, an excellent chance on the other side with Ilya Mikheyev, as Tyler Myers took a shot from the point, Mikheyev takes about a second as he tries to handle the puck and turn around. And by then, Cam Talbot with a heck of a save with the right pad. Batch, there's been 30 hits in this game by the Vancouver Canucks alone, 49 total. But not all the hits have married equal. The last one on Moore by Niels Hoaglander along the boards, a simple play up the boards. They're hitting with emphasis right now, so this is a very physical matchup. That's why there's more scrums at the end of these plays. Because both of these teams are feeling these hits. Should mention as well, Vasily Pod Colson has remained on the Vancouver bench after blocking that shot. So hasn't had to go down the tunnel. Took it off the outside of his right foot. Kings win the faceoff. Gavrikov gets a clean wrist shot on net. DeSmith blockered it to the near corner. JT Miller 
battling with Byfield for it down low. Kopitar in there too, knocked down by Ian Cole. And Miller centers for Di Giuseppe, who will skate to center. Well, Di Giuseppe lifts it right wing into the King zone, goes after it on the four check near corner. Plays it loose to Besser. Now for Miller, right circle, trying to pass through the slot, broken up by Kopitar, and the Kings will transition the other way. Kopitar for Byfield into the Vancouver zone. Pass to the back door was just out of the reach of Matt Roy. Jumping up in the rush, looking for a tap in at the far post. Nikita Zadorov settles things down in his own end. Kings are changing. He passes right wing to center for Philip Hironik. Hironik to the L.A. line. Cuts around Gavrikov. Tried a shot from a tough angle along the goal line. It was held out by Talbot with the left pad. And now Pierre-Luc Dubois passes left wing to center for Adrian Kempe. Kempe. Rink wide right circle for Arvidsson. Threw it to the goal. Tipped on by Dubois. Held out by DeSmith. Nice save with the right pad. Dowdy trying to hold in near point. Lost the puck. Here's Quinn Hughes into the L.A. zone. Right wing. Hughes to the net with a clean wrist shot right on. And Talbot made a good save off his right arm. Lafferty's after the loose puck. Left corner. Battling with Dowdy. Comes free to LaFerriere. And he'll pass out of the zone for Pierre-Luc Dubois, who gains the red line on left wing and dumps it in. Under five minutes left. Second period. Canucks and Kings tied at one. And a hard-fought affair that certainly has a playoff-like atmosphere tonight at Rogers Arena. Quinn Hughes at his own line for Myers. Skates right wing to center. Rims it behind the L.A. net. Met by Trevor Moore on the far boards. He missed it. Delayed offside against the Canucks, but it comes out of the zone. And Pod Colson leaves for Myers at his own line. Right wing for Suter. He'll tip it in deep. Doughty's back to it. Plays behind his own goal for Deneau. Try to pass. Broken up by Besser. It rolls into the slot. Back to Susie in the line. Long wrist shot. He missed the net. It's cleared from behind the goal by Mikey Anderson. On to the far side for Trevor Moore, and he'll dump it into the Vancouver end. Ian Cole near boards. Quickly to center for Hoaglander. Pass rolled off his stick, and Anderson plays it ahead to Deneau. Now for Trevor Lewis. Across the Vancouver line, taken down by Susie. This will be a Canuck penalty. Talbot charging to the bench. Six on five for the Kings for the moment. Jordan Spence has it top of the point. Left boards for England. Back to Spence. Right side Kopitar. Down the far wall for Kempe. Rink wide pass to Spence. Left circle. Drops to Kopitar. One timer. Tip wide of the net off a stick. And Kempe gets it again right wing. Now to Kopitar. Left point. Down the near boards to Spence. Rink wide pass. Right circle. Center back in front. It's loose. They score. Lazat threw it to the front of the net. It bounced off Trevor Lewis at the top of the crease and in. And the Kings cash in at 6-on-5 on the delayed call to retake the lead. It's 2-1. And a Kings straight strike late in this period, also on a delayed penalty as Trevor Lewis and Carson Soucy for battling for the puck. Soucy was going to go to the penalty box anyways on a trip. But Trevor Lewis... Looks like the puck goes off of Carson Soucy's right skate and then the left skate of Trevor Lewis. And a little bit of a deflection past Casey DeSmith, who's searching for the puck. That's unlucky for the Canucks, as Trevor Lewis is going to get credited with his ninth goal of the season after it might have been actually... I think it might have been Soucy two or three times on this season. Yeah, One, might- two... Three, Maybe it hits Lewis's skate. Lazat led the celebration back to the Kings bench, so we'll have to wait and see who I gets credit. I think you're credit. right. I think it went off of both of Carson Soucy's skates, and this might be Lazat's goal. Either way, the Kings lead 2-1. to one. And the goal comes at 16-29 of the second period. The time of the goal is brought to you by Crow, your trusted advisors for 55 years. Learn more at crowmackay.ca. Kings dump it back into the Vancouver end. Tyler Myers chased to the end boards by Kevin Fiala. Leaves for Quinn Hughes, who plays it near side for JT Miller. Miller tried to get it past Gavrikov at the blue line, but Garland follows up. Plays to Miller. He'll go rink wide left boards for Di Giuseppe. Dumps it behind the net. Garland mishandled it down low. Gavrikov gets it. He's hit by Miller, but played it free to Philip Deneau, and he'll pass right wing to center. Out of the reach of Kevin Fiala, and it's icing against the Kings with 2.56 left in the second, and L.A. leading Vancouver 2-1. to one. And right before that goal, there was a sequence where Car- or excuse me, Ian Cole plays a pass to Niels Hoaglander in the neutral zone, and he ends up bobbling the puck, and that's what leads L.A. to tack the other way. And what happened there was... Carson Soucy, Ian Cole stuck on the ice for about a minute. They were tired and they weren't able to get off the ice, but a giveaway in the neutral zone is what leads that attack and eventually draws the penalty and gets LA a goal. Kings win the faceoff in their own zone and ice the puck again. And after a couple of looks, I think 
Unfortunately for Carson Soucy, this hit his left foot, his right foot, and his left foot again before going across the goal line into the Vancouver net. So a tough break for the Canucks, and we'll see how they respond now with 2.50 left in the second, trailing 2-1. to one. And if that is Lazat's goal, it's his sixth goal of the year. So I, I credited one to Trevor Lewis. We're going to take that one away and give it to Lazat instead. Official scorekeepers have gone with Lazat, too. Canucks win the faceoff in the L.A. zone. Hironic leaves near point for Teddy Bluger. Dumps it to the near side corner. Trevor Moore onto it. Clears around to the far side for Fiala. He played it to the line, but not out. Gloved down by Zadorov. Drops to Teddy Bluger, and he'll dump it into the right wing corner. Lafferty, after Gavrikov on the forecheck, got it free to Trevor Moore. He flips it out to center. Zadorov at his own line, mishandled the puck. Fiala pressures him with a forecheck. Zadorov knocks him down. Fiala goes down in a heap, grabbing his face. The officials don't buy it, and here come the Canucks with numbers of the rush to center. Bluger to the L.A. line on left wing. Drops to Hughes. Rick wide for Hironic. Right point. Slap pass to the side of the net. Looking for a tip from McKayev, but he couldn't direct it on target. Hironic again at the right point. Spins it behind the L.A. net. Dowdy meets it far boards and flips it out to center for Adrian Kempe. He fires it rink wide for Byfield. Into the Vancouver zone. Drops to Kopitar. High slot far side. Kempe with a wrister. And he missed the net. DeSmith might have got a piece of it. Kings keep it in the zone. Kempe. Right point for Dowdy. Leaves for Kopitar. Top of the right circle. Takes a shot. Stopped by DeSmith. Rebound loose. In the crease. Kick wide to the net. But they score. Kopitar found it in the blue paint. Shovels it home on the backhand. And L.A. goes up 3-1 to one with 140 left in the second. And the Kings win another battle in front of the net as there's chaos. Kempe, Byfield, and Kopitar all in and around the blue paint. The shot comes in from the right-hand side, and Kopitar just circling the net, eventually finding his way back and goes on the, the back door to end up getting this goal off of his own shot. And he hits a couple more skates here, Batch, unfortunately for the Canucks, but that's what happens when you're chasing on a play. And a couple of the Canucks players, Hughes and Hironic, don't have control of the situation, lose battles in front, and Kopitar makes it 3-1. Kopitar's 24th of the season gives the Kings a 3-1 lead at 18-20 of the second period. The time of the goal is brought to you by Crow, your trusted advisors for 55 years. Learn more at crowmackay.ca. And in spite of the fact that this has been a very evenly contested game, and you might even be able to argue that the Canucks have been the better team through nearly 39 minutes, they find themselves down by a pair in the late stages of the second period. Tyler Myers with the pocket center ice. Dumps it into the L.A. end on right wing. Dowdy's after it far corner. Throws it up the boards for Trevor Moore, and now for Philip Deneau, right wing to center. Deneau to the Vancouver line. Passes left wing for Lewis. Driving wide behind the Canuck net. Banks it right point for Arvidsson with a heavy shot, and DeSmith fought it off to the near boards. Besser gets it at his own line, is hit by Anderson as he floated into the King's end. Besser breaks up a pass, can't carry into the zone because Suter is caught deep, holds onto the puck and gets it right wing for Pod Colson. Knocked down in a battle with Arvidsson, Pod Colson does well to hold it into the line nonetheless, tried to dump it down the boards, but it hit Gavrikov and came back out to center. Zadorov left wing into the LAN, made an extra move, and Pod Colson was offside through the middle of the ice. 35.2 seconds left in the second. It's the Kings 3 and the Canucks 1 on Alpine Credits, Canucks Hockey on Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Protect what matters most to you with a comprehensive fire safety plan from Get Fire Plan. Specializing in creating fire safety plans and construction fire safety plans for a wide variety of buildings, from high-rise residential properties to daycares, restaurants, malls, and many other types of businesses. Get Fire Plan's experienced professionals will assess your building, identify potential fire hazards, and create a detailed plan to mitigate risks and enhance your safety. Save $200 today. For details, visit GetFirePlan.com. Burnaby's Modern Indian Eatery Indian Bombay Bistro is offering a buy one dish and get a second dish 50% off deal. Do that and you'll also get 50% off a cocktail until March 31st. Dine in only. Visit IndianBombayBistro.com. What does David L. Young of Dexter Realty have in common with a hockey enforcer? He's gritty, he gets to the dirty areas, and he has a toothy smile. Vancouver's David L. Young of Dexter Realty. Here, there, everywhere. Homes by DavidLYoung.com. Hey, it's Kevin Woodley. Have you ever wondered why us goalies wear all that giant equipment? It's because 100 kilometer an hour slap shots leave a mark. 
So did fast moving cars. So when it was time for my daughter to get her first vehicle, I asked a friend in the industry and he recommended Hyundai. So I called my friends at White Rock Hyundai and quickly discovered their base models had more standard features than the luxury sedan I was driving at the time. Now my daughter is as protected as us goalies. So for reliability, power, and above all safety, visit whiterockhyundai.com. Hi, this is Elias Patterson, and you're listening to the official home of the Canucks Sportsnet 650. Get your tickets for the Canucks online 50-50 draw. Go to Canucks.com slash 50-50 to enter. Ticket sales close at the end of the second intermission. Must be 19 plus and located in BC at the time of purchase to play. Know your limit. Play within it. Brendan Bachelor and Randy Janda with you. 35 seconds left in the second period. Kings lead the Canucks 3-1. Make sure to stay tuned for Canucks Central at the intermission coming up with Vic Nazar and Dan Riccio. Cox win a face off of the Kings blue line. Pedersen dumps it behind the LA net. Talbot out of the goal. Left for Matt Roy on the end boards. Threw it up the near wall. Pedersen centers for Garland. Turns and shoots. Talbot made the save. Rebound in front. Miller can't get to it. Zadorov left circle. Carries down the boards. 15 seconds left in the period. Goes behind the Kings net. Near side. Pedersen with a tight angle wrist shot. Couldn't get it to go. And Miller has to hold in left point. Gabrikov hit hard by Pedersen. Plays it around the zone for Byfield. He'll chip it to center. And the second period draws to a close. As behind the play, Matt Roy and Connor Garland are into it. Gloves still on, and the linesman having to get in to make sure that situation doesn't devolve. But a frustrating end to this second period for the Canucks. They give up two goals in the final four minutes, and instead of a one-all tie through 40 minutes, it's L.A. leading Vancouver 3-1. to one. And it's unfortunate for the Canucks because for the majority of that period, they had the territorial advantage. They created some decent chances. But Cam Talbot with a big save on Ilya Mikheyev, which was a turning point, and a couple of mistakes lead to a couple of goals for L.A. And now Vancouver in the final 20 minutes is going to have to try to break down a team that is very strong defensively, has been all season, but that's the task at hand for Vancouver. Time for Canucks Central at the intermission with Bick Nazar and Dan Riccio. This is Canucks Central at the intermission on the official home of the Canucks. Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Kempe, right point for Dowdy. Leaves for Kopitar. Top of the right circle. Takes a shot. Stopped by DeSmith. Rebound loose. In the crease. Get wide to the net. But they score. Kopitar found it in the blue paint. Shovels it home on the backhand. And L.A. goes up 3-1 to one with 140 left in the second. That's how it stayed the rest of the second period. Your LA Kings, the LA Kings leading your Vancouver Canucks 3-1 to one through 40 minutes. Welcome to Canucks Central at the intermission on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Second intermission brought to you by CertainTeed, the pro's choice for roofing, siding, drywall, insulation, and ceiling systems. Bick Nazar, Dan Riccio. I think you said in the first intermission, it's a game of mistakes. Yes. And sure enough, it happened in the <laughs> second period. Mistakes yeah. leading to Kings goals. Too many mistakes by the Vancouver Canucks. And once the Kings found and were able to pressure the Canucks in certain spots, we saw their D-zone coverage open up like a... Uh, I don't know. Can of tuna. It was not very good. I was going to say can of tuna to save you out of that <laughs> sentence. That's amazing. Uh, it was a slow period. We're getting a lot of texts of just people with, with eye rolls right now saying that period was a drag. And it, it played to the King's strength. Yeah. At one point, midway of the mark, it was only three shots on goal combined between the two teams. They ultimately end with 9-8. Uh, yeah, 9-8. So 17 shots the rest of the way. So it did pick up in the back half of that period uh, with a little bit more energy from the Kings leading to goal-scoring opportunities. Yeah, and the Kings just sort of found their way as the period went on. Uh, you heard Randeep say it right before the end of the or as they just sent it off to us here for, for the intermission. But the Canucks had the majority of the territorial advantage in the frame. They had a couple of pretty good chances. Mikheyev has a big-time chance that Cam Talbot makes a big save on right at the net front. That could have made it 2-1 Vancouver. Instead, we're sitting here, and it's 3-1 for the LA Kings. But most of all on the offensive side for Vancouver, they had 17 shot attempts in the period. And they only get eight shots on net. So, and five of those at five on five. Or, sorry, six of those at five on five. So, you know, you're looking at it, and 
they could be doing better. They had some shots from the point that missed the net completely. Not a great scene. We saw Rick Tockett or heard Rick Tockett complain about this last week against the Washington game in that loss. Now uh, it's feeling like it's a bit of a storyline again tonight when the Canucks are getting shooting opportunities missing the net. Uh, and also bad bounces uh, leading to it as well. Obviously, you make your own mistakes, but also some bad bounces. But let's go through the goal yes. here, uh, starting with the Blake Lazat goal. You know, th there's a D zone retrieval that CC puts off the back, or off the sideboards to Ian Cole, and in the moment, it looked like Elias Pettersson was open right at the blue line. I thought, all right, you can sling that pass all the way up there. He goes for the shorter or safer option to Nils Hoaglander, and Hoaglander. Doubles it. Yeah, it doesn't handle it to the greatest, and it leads to a transition opportunity for the Kings. But in and the meantime, yeah. as as Lewis is entering the zone with some speed, he draws a penalty on Ian Cole as he went to go sweep it. Susie. On Susie. Yeah. And there's the penalty. And now all suddenly all these yes. opportunities get presented because it's of the snowball. extra man. Yeah. It's a snowball. Uh, one mistake leads to another mistake leads to more mistakes. So Susie takes the penalty and they go six on five. Cam Talbot comes out. They get Kempe and Kopitar onto the ice. And all of a sudden, you're starting to feel the Canucks on their heels. What I don't like about it, you know, it's six on five, so you should be able to still clog up passing lanes, right? Make it difficult. And the Kings were able to, I think, get three cross seam passes yeah. cross lot passes before the eventual goal like yes it goes off of 17,322 skates before it enters Casey DeSmith's net but you can't allow a team to get three cross seam passes cross slot passes and not expect them to get a great scoring chance out of it Sure, they don't necessarily complete the final one to Lewis at the back door, but it goes off of skating into the net. And I know we have a texter saying Casey DeSmith was swimming. Well, when a goalie's got to go post to post on numerous occasions in the same play, you're going to see him lose his net, lose his positioning more than you would if he's able to square up a shot. Well, what's interesting, too, in that stretch there right before the goal, the Canucks were starting to you know, get back into that stage where they were – Figuring out the one three one. Yes, and they were the better team. So some methodical breakouts, right? They were willing to wait till they all regrouped, similar to what we saw in LA. And then it just—it's one giveaway it leads to a penalty. And, and as you mentioned, it is all those seam passes, and it, it's challenging for goalies to constantly, as you say, move left to right, left to right, right to left, and then. You know, Casey DeSmith, his, his natural way is to be a bit more challenging. He's going to step out of the crease a little bit. And whether that Lazat one, I don't know if he was trying to shoot it or he was trying to pass it back to Lewis. It, it, it takes some good fortune because it goes off Cole, off Susie's both skates as he's battling in front with Lewis. But that's, you know, you do have to give Casey DeSmith a little bit of room to be himself and play have a game how he's going to play it. Uh, but, yeah, that, that opens up the back door in that play. Yeah, you just, you got to find a way to cut those passing lanes. Right, and, and I guess they do on the final one, uh, or partially do, because it goes off a skate, and then another skate, and then another skate. Um, but, again, like those things are going to happen if you allow, like, you create your own luck, right? And in that moment, the LA Kings created their luck by really putting the, the, the Canucks on the back foot. Kopitar gets the next goal to put the Kings up 3-1 in the offensive zone. So it goes hughes Heronic together. And they, they get a couple opportunities, yeah, uh, some shots from distance and, and from Hronik. But the puck did come around, and Queen Hughes pinched Yes, on a play that it didn't look like he was ever going to get to. But nevertheless, he does. He pinches, and it creates a three-on-two the other way. Kings miss the net. I think it was Kempe with the opportunity. Misses the net, but puck stays in zone. And it's, it's a shot from distance. But even as they were trying to get back the Canucks, nobody really got settled into any positions. No. And a lot of standing around happens. D-zone coverage, poor again. And what's interesting, too, is, is it's a shot from the point. Both Hughes and Aronic end up taking Kempe in front of the net. Byfield's all by himself to the left of Casey DeSmith. No one ever really picks him up. And now this huge battle ensues. Both guys are trying to get over to Byfield. Kempe is holding them both up, battling as well. And in that battle, Quinn Hughes looks like he tries to kick it or he steps on the puck, whatever it was. 
just shuffles it over to an oncoming Kopitar from behind the net, and he gets to poke it into the empty net. Yeah, Quinn is just trying to clear the danger, get it away from the front of the net. Doesn't have his stick available to him because it's being tied up in the net front battle. Gives it a little knock with his stick, or sorry, his skate, and it goes right to Kopitar. Uh, again, you know, like Casey DeSmith, not in the, the best positioning, but when chaos ensues, you expect chaos to occur. <laughs> and that's kind of what happened for the Canucks, losing themselves in their D-zone coverage. We haven't seen it often this year, but those were two plays, both of them. And then the LA Kings capitalize on both, where the Canucks definitely got caught out. More concerning on that play is how Quinn Hughes was noticeably in pain and clutching his left shoulder, left arm, after the goal goes in. He did go to the bench uh, and sat at the end. And I'll, I'll bring it up here, but I don't believe he came back on the ice for the rest of that period. So it's something obviously we'll keep an eye on. But you know, while Didn't play, take a shift, yeah, yeah, while play was going on, I was keeping an eye on him, and he did kind of rotate the arm uh, once or twice. And yeah, he didn't take a shift in the remaining minute forty. And there was a TV timeout in there as well, so plenty of time to uh, get a rest and go back out there. So something to keep an eye on in the tail end of the season here of. What is the yeah. status? We saw it last week with, with Miller when he yeah. when he blocked that shot. And then you're like, oh, no. Yeah. Now you can kind of feel that way with, with Quinn Hughes. We'll see what happens. I mean, I think he's earlier in the season there was uh, an arm injury he was dealing with. And you saw that on a couple of broadcasts where he would be feeling it out and whatever else. But now it's, it's cropped up again. And you could see him in noticeable pain as he's getting up and off the ice trying not to move. His, his arm too much as he got off. But as I did say, he, he, was, he was rotating he was, he it. He was doing the old, uh, the old rotator cuff. Yeah. It's like giving, me when I wake the up. the arm circles on the bench. Yeah. Yes. Wake up at age 30. It's, ah, all right. I got <laughs> to flex that one out. Do doing it right now. Feels on good. it wrong? Like, oh, feels good. He was, he, was, he was doing one of those. We'll see uh, uh, when he comes out here for the third period uh, what it looks like. Uh, actually, you mentioned that JT Miller shot block. Yeah, uh, the one that he takes off the the ankle. But Colson had a very similar one in this period as well, where it felled him, but he got up and uh, kept competing because he's been fantastic again tonight. Man, uh, on the forecheck, there you could argue there isn't a better Canucks forechecker right now than Vasily Pod Colson. I'm almost to the point where throw him up there with with Miller and Besser and see how it looks with the way that he is playing and the type of ferocity that he is going into the offensive zone with he made a couple of really smart plays in the period i know you pointed one out on twitter where he's the middle drive guy and as he's driving to the king's net he clicks up a stick from the king's defender and gives himself some space gives Suter a lane to pass it into but he's unable to connect with pod colson going to the front of the net you know it's uh Little things like that that add up to big things. You just got to do them often enough. I had a, a friend reach out and be like, hey, what's the King stat? Uh, you, know, you know the stat we love to reference for Vancouver when leading after two? Yeah. So somebody wanted to know what the King stat was. 28-0-3 uh, when leading after two. So no regulation losses. No regulation losses for the LA so Kings. So they're better so than the Canucks. Uh, in theory, yes, Canucks are 37-1-4. and four. So just so, one regulation loss. However you want to look at it. That's 37. Yes. Versus 28. Okay. So, again, it's however you want to look Canucks at it. Canucks have done it more often. Correct. Leading to more opportunities to have failure. But, yes, the, the, the LA Kings are one of four teams to have been perfect in regulation when leading after two. The other two teams, or three teams, are Seattle, Montreal, and the Florida Panthers, which is the one uh, that's also very impressive. And they're at 31-0-3. Uh, update on the out-of-town scoreboard. The Vegas Golden Knights beating the St. Louis Blues. 2-1 in overtime. Blues scoring a late one to tie it up, but cannot, cannot uh, get the win. So if the Canucks are able to force overtime here tonight, come back from a 3-1 deficit, they will have clinched a playoff berth. That's all they need. They don't need to win. They just need to force overtime in some fashion. So two goals. And none against you find yourself with the next next to your name tomorrow morning. But they got some work to do. Yeah. Offensively, they've, they've left some out there. Obviously, the Kings are very difficult to break mm -hmm. down. 
But, but there, there was the McKay of chance. Bluger had a wraparound. Some people are texting in, where's, where's Pedersen tonight? Best moment for him was Hoaglander on a retrieval. Yeah. Slid it to Pedersen for a good one-timer coming downhill uh, right by the net, and he doesn't really get a good attempt off. That was really about it. I've, uh, I've actually really liked Pedersen's game tonight. So uh, for those that are texting that in, uh, you're not watching the same game as me. Welcome to the post-game show. Yes. Get ready for it tonight. Uh, we'll be back here taking it to 1030. Vic Nazar and Dan Reacher. We'll see what the Canucks can do in the final 20 minutes. Brendan Batchelor, Randy Janda will take you the rest of the way home. Uh, we'll talk to you about the post-game show. It is Canucks Central at the intermission on the Sportsnet Radio Network. As you get ready for hunting season, whether your game is bear or anything else, it's time to head to Siwash Sports. Rifles, shotguns, optics, accessories, ammo, archery gear, whatever you need, Siwash has it. Get your guns serviced or upgrade your gear with brands you trust. They even have 410 in stock, as well as paintball, pellet, and airsoft gear. At BC's newest Browning and Winchester dealer, the Fraser Valley's Siwash Sports, in Chilliwack and online at SiwashSports.ca. Tuesday. This is the Million Dollar Season! Canada's Got Talent is back. It's on. With the biggest season yet, this year's winner will receive a life-changing $1 million. The largest prize in Canadian TV history. All thanks to Rogers. This is the biggest season on the biggest show in Got Talent history. Canada's Got Talent. The Million Dollar Season. All new Tuesday, 8, 7 Central on City TV or streaming on City TV+. Plus. Waypoint Insurance has been here for over 150 years, seeking and sourcing ways to fill your home with safety, comfort, and peace of mind. They travel the same roads, trek the same trails, and make their way through life's adventures, setting their sights on a life worth living. Because this is Waypoint's home, their playground, their livelihood. So go explore. From business to home to auto to personal insurance, Waypoint has your back. Waypoint Insurance, together protecting what you love. Visit waypoint.ca. Taxi! Yellow Cab Vancouver is your go-to for a safe and affordable ride anytime. Secure your ride back by downloading the all-new Yellow Cab app and book your prepaid rides. And right now, you can use promo code 2024YELLOW to receive 10% off your next trip. That's promo code 2024YELLOW. Thanks, bud. Download the Yellow Cab Vancouver app on iOS or Android and book your ride today. Or visit yellowcabonline.com. That's yellowcabonline.com. March 28th on Sportsnet. The wait is finally over. Here we go. The Blue Jays are back. It's go time. Batter up. And Guerrero delivers. This is how you play the game, folks. Toronto touches down in Tampa for the season opener. That's the way to get the party started. The boys of summer are ready. Are you? Home run for Bo Folks, you're going to love watching this guy play all your life. Blue Jays, Rays, March 28th on Sportsnet. Coverage begins 12 Pacific. From the kitchen to your table, TSC is serving up spring. Awaken your inner chef with up to 35% off top shelf kitchenware. Put a twist on old recipes or take a stab at something new. Light snacks, hearty meals, scrumptious desserts. TSC has brands you're craving. KitchenAid, Vitamix, Curtis Stone, and more. To help you savor the season right down to the last bite. Shop now at tsc.ca. Exciting offers every day. Hughes cuts in front again, doing laps in the San Jose zone. Quinn Hughes shoots, he scores! And that goal was all Quinn Hughes. Hey, Vancouver. Rogers wants you to stay connected to your Vancouver Canucks. The Canucks are off and running. Well, what a heads-up play here by Quinn Hughes. Catch every goal on Canada's largest and most reliable 5G network with Rogers 5G mobile plans. To learn more, visit rogers.com forward slash 5G. That's rogers.com forward slash 5G. Rock climb at the epic Skaha Bluffs. Or bike the over 100 trails of Three Blind Mice and the Kettle Valley Rail Trail. When outdoor adventures are what you're looking for this spring, Penticton, B.C. is home to it all. Rock climbing, mountain biking, hiking, golfing, kayaking, and more. The options are endless, and the views are incredible. Plus, don't forget to take a break at one of the many wineries or the eight craft breweries that call Penticton home. Discover B.C.'s mecca of adventure. Head to visitpenticton.com. Hey, this is JT Miller, and you're on the home of the Canucks. Canucks with the draw. Miller scores right off the faceoff. He rips it top shelf. Sportsnet Radio Network.
Welcome back inside Rogers Arena. The Kings lead the Canucks 3-1 to one after 2, and we'll get to the third period momentarily. Make sure to stay tuned after the game for the Canucks Central postgame show with Bick Nazar and Dan Riccio tonight. They'll take your calls and texts. They'll chat with Ian McIntyre. You'll hear Rick Tockett's postgame thoughts and much more right here on your home of the Canucks, Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. On the out-of-town scoreboard, the Vegas Golden Knights beat the St. Louis Blues 2-1 to in overtime. Jonathan Marcheseau scoring the game-winning goal. So the Blues dropping a point means if the Canucks can come back and win this game in any fashion, regulation time, overtime, the shootout, whatever it might be, they will clinch a playoff spot. But they have an uphill climb, Randy, trailing by two after two. Yeah, the Kings after two periods, when they're leading after two periods, are 28 28- 0 oh, and 3. So Vancouver's going to have to continue to try to get to the middle of the ice. They've had a lot of shot attempts, 37, which is 12 more than LA. But the problem is a lot of the star players right now, Elias Pedersen, JT Miller, Brock Besser, no shots on goal. Going to have to up that here if they want to get back in this game. Canucks in black skating from right to left. The Kings in white going from left to right. And the Canucks control off the faceoff. McKay leaves it his own line for Quinn Hughes. He'll skate left wing to the red line and dump it behind the Kings goal. Luger after it on the far boards, chipped it deep. Doughty goes near side for Deneau. Played it up the boards, but Hughes pinches down the wall to hold in. Gets it to Bluger left corner. He fires it back to the right point for Tyler Myers. Long shot, blocked off a stick, rebound in front. Nearly came to McKayev at the top of the crease, but he couldn't bat it on target. Now Hughes trying to hold in at the line. High sticks the puck, and the faceoff will come out. To neutralize 32 seconds into the third period, Kings lead the Canucks 3 to 1. The Sam Lafferty, Teddy Bluger, and Ilya Mikheyev line has been strong. They've had chances in the middle of the ice. Sam Lafferty scored the goal, goal earlier on. Uh, after that, as well, Ilya Mikheyev had a good opportunity. But the other lines also need to provide some offense here. And there is a stat that is under threat right now 9 0 2 when Sam Lafferty scores for the Vancouver Canucks. So no regulation losses when he scored. We got some work to do on that front right now. Scored the lone Vancouver goal tonight. Kings to center. Byfield tied up by Besser on the back check. Got it ahead to Kempe. He's poke checked by Hirona. Got it out to center for Di Giuseppe, who dumps it into the L.A. zone. Gavrikov behind his own goal. Threw it around the far boards. It goes all the way down, but icing's waved off. And to Smith drops it for Zadorov on the end board. Here's Adora. Skates in front of his own goal. Passes right wing to center for Besser. Tied up by Gavrikov. Is unable to dump it in. Drops it back to Hironik at his own line. Now for Zadorov on the near boards. D to D to Hironik. Pressured by Byfield. Sweeps it left wing to center for Elias Pedersen. Pedersen to the Kings line. One on four into the high slot. Dump the puck to the right corner. Gavrikov clears it around to Roy on the near side. He'll bounce it all the way down. And this will be icing against the Kings. 123 into the third. Los Angeles leads Vancouver 3-1. The Garland, Pedersen, and Hoaglander line has had an aggressive forecheck at times, but in terms of turning that into chances, getting to the middle of the ice has been difficult for that line specifically on that last play. You're right. Garland and Hoaglander were coming on the ice, and Pedersen really just one on four against the Kings, and it's been some individual efforts here as they're just trying to find space against this opposition, which is very, very difficult. We've heard Rick Tockett talk a lot about Pedersen needing to move his feet lately. He kind of got into a bit of a standstill or froze driving into the zone and wasn't skating as we know he can, but he's after it on the forecheck now. Digs it free for Hoaglander behind the net. Neils Hoaglander. Hit into the right wing boards by Jordan Spence. Keeps the puck. Battling with Deneau. Spence in there too. Comes away with the puck and passes near side for Trevor Moore who lifts it off the glass of the Canuck line. Connor Garland in his own end. The lead for Carson Soucy. Canucks completing a change. Soucy left wing to center for Suter. Tipped it in deep from the wrong side of the red line, and it's icing against the Canucks. And Pew Suter arguing that one as he did deflect it on the other side of the red line, but I don't know if uh, the LA Kings were kind of. There's a defenseman back there, Drew Doughty, just kind of taking a sweet time to get back there, but it is an icing nonetheless. Canucks not looking all that cohesive here to start off the third period and a lot of that has to do with the LA Kings and how they sit back and make you break them down face off to the right of DeSmith in the Vancouver zone 
Kings win the faceoff. Arvidsson couldn't get a shot away. He was tied up by Susie, who gets it out to center for Neil Zoman, and he dumps it in on the left wing. Bot pulls it on the four check. It's Moverara into the end boards. Kings defenseman got it loose far side for Laferriere, who fell and couldn't clear the zone. Oman holds in. Left side for Hughes. Carries behind the goal. Out the right wing side into the slot for Myers. Trying to wrist shot it. Fluttered wide of the net and Pog pulls and gets it back left wing. To the top of the point for Quinn Hughes. Makes a move away from Dubois. Left circle. Hughes forced wide by Moverara. Drops it back near post. Oman missed it. It rolls to the blue line. Pog Colson can't hold in and has to play it back to center for Tyler Myers. Myers to the near boards for Hughes. He'll delay in his own zone with the Canucks completing a change. Hughes drops to J.T. Miller. He's out there with Pedersen and Garland, and here's Miller with speed to the L.A. line on right wing. Dumps it into the corner, goes after Roy on the forecheck. He pokes it loose to Gavrikov. And then it's cleared out of the zone by Lazard. He's hit hard by Garland. Cox play it back in, but it's offside as Garland had never come out of the zone, which is a pity because Miller was about to have a chance in on net, but there'll be a neutral zone faceoff instead. 316 into the third period. Kings lead the Canucks 3 to 1. And Connor Garland is playing a bit like Stone Cold Steve Austin right now. You mentioned the 316. He's getting under the skin of a lot of LA Kings. First it was Matt uh, Waugh and or sorry, excuse me, Matt Roy and then now Blake Lazat along the boards as well. So he's just trying to play that agitator role a little bit just to create something for that line which has had some good moments but hasn't been able to really generate any offense. Luger wins the faceoff at the Kings blue line back to Zadorov across to Hironik again for Zadorov and he gains the LA line but made an extra move and Mikheyev was offside on the far boards. And that's, that's what L.A. does really well, that they're going to clog up the middle of the ice and make you, really force you to make that extra move at the blue line. And that's exactly what happens. Zadorov forced to go wide by Kopitar. And that move just to the left draws Ilya Mikheyev offside. And he's in the zone before his teammate brings the puck in. Talk about how good the Kings have been when leading after two periods. Canucks only 3-11-1 when trailing through 40 minutes. So it's been a slog for them to come from behind in situations like this, which isn't surprising. That's the conventional wisdom around the NHL. If you have a lead through 40 minutes, you win a lot of the time. Matt Roy with a shot for the right point in the Vancouver zone. Blocked by Bluger. Comes to Byfield right wing half wall. Dumps it behind them. Lafferty and Kempe battle for it in the far corner. Lafferty gets it free to Zadora. Behind the net near side, Hironik. Knocked down in a battle with Kopitar. But the Canucks clear to center nonetheless. Gavrikov fires it back the other way. Byfield tips it in on to Smith, and he'll drop it to Philip Hironik. Hironik, left wing for Hughes. Dumps it in for the wrong side of center. Icing waved off. Dowdy back to the pocket into the end boards by Pod Polson. Trying to dig it free side of the net. And Pod Colson does get it loose to Besser right corner. Out of the line for Myers. Tried a wrist shot. It was blocked by Moore and deflected into the L.A. bench. 4.22 elapsed in the third period. Kings lead the Canucks 3-1. to one. Now Rick Tockett changing up the lines a little bit there as Vasily Pod Colson on the ice with Hugh Suter and Brock Besser. Just trying to add a bit of a spark. Maybe on the top lines here is now J.T. Miller coming on the ice with Elias Pettersson and Niels Hoaglander. Talk of trying to find something to spark his team here. And the earlier you can score one in this third period to make it a one-goal game, the more confidence you can generate for your group and momentum. And we'll see if they can create a chance off this face-off of the Kings zone to our left far circle. Only one shot for both teams in this third period. And in fact, there was a shot for the Kings that has since been taken away. So there has not been a shot in this third period yet. Kings cleared it to center. Pedersen driving the L.A. line, tied up by Deneau. Myers pokes it free to Hoaglander. Couldn't settle down a bouncing puck in the high slot, and Trevor Moore leaves behind his own goal for Drew Doughty. Doughty chased out the far side by Miller, goes back to Moore near corner. He sweeps it to center, and Deneau dumps it in. To Smith out of the net. Leaves near corner for Hughes. Backhand pass, middle of the ice for Niels Hoagland. Feeds left wing to center for Elias Pedersen. Pedersen fires it in wide of the net of Talbot. Met by Anderson on the far boards. He's hit by Hoaglander. And he floats it back in on to Smith, who blocks it in the crease. And Hughes will start the breakout again. Quinn Hughes, left wing to center. Hughes Suter tips it to the L.A. line. Couldn't control the puck. And Dubois sends the Canucks retreating back to their own zone. Hughes quickly up the left wing for Besser. Into the Kings zone. 
Pressured by Dubois on the back check. Besser stops up. Cycles behind the net for Suter. Now to the right circle. Ian Cole with a quick snapshot right on. Kicked out by Talbot off the right pad. And the Kings get it out to center. Susi at his own line. Feeds near boards for Besser. Drops it back to Susi. And he banks it left wing for Bluger to the Kings blue line. He dumps it behind the net. Talbot out of the goal. Leaves for Jordan Spence. Spence cycles up the near wall for Victor Arvidsson. Back to Spence behind his own net. And again to Arvidsson, who finds some room on the near side and flips it high in the air to the Vancouver line. Ian Cole back to it, chased down by LaFerriere, leaves for Susie down low. Carson Susie to center for Garland on left wing, tied up by Lazard as he dumped it in. Bluger's after it on the forecheck. McKayev, too, pursuing the puck right corner. But Fiala gets it free and bounces it out to center ice for LaFerriere, who dumps it in. Nikita Zadorov hit into the inboards by Lazard, knocked him down. Lazat's got the puck left corner. Protecting it from Hironic. Cycles behind the net for Fiala. Out of the right point for Matt Roy. Hit by McKay. Dumped it behind the net. Patterson far corner. Battling with LaFerriere. Lazat in to help out. Played it back to the line. It deflects out to center. And Gavrikov goes D to D to the near boards for Matt Roy. Who dumps it back in. Philip Hironic. Behind his own net for Vancouver. Fires a puck to center, tipped in deep by Pedersen. Doughty first to it behind the net. Makes a move away from Pedersen, is hit by JT Miller. Doughty slashed him back, the officials didn't call it, and the Kings get it out to center. Kempe, left wing to the Vancouver line, tried a wrist shot blocked by Myers. Up into the netting and out of play. 7.02, gone in the third. It's the Kings 3 and the Canucks 1 on Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey. Streaming on the Sportsnet app and along the Sportsnet radio network. In a world where business knows no borders, Crow provides global reach on a personal scale. Spanning more than 145 countries, Crow's trusted advisors have the knowledge and expertise to add value to your business. From traditional accounting services to business consulting, Crow creates solutions tailored to your unique needs. Let Crow's expertise elevate your business. Visit crowmackay.ca to learn more. Crow. Smart decisions. Lasting value. Landlords spend 76 hours managing their property in a year. That's 19 date nights. 25 hockey games. And 37. Dad, let's get some ice cream. Moments. What could you be doing with your time? At Hope Street, we help busy landlords get their time back. Live life, get paid. Become an armchair landlord today. Hope Street. Because life's too short to spend it managing properties. HopeStreet.ca It's time to reinvent, reimagine, redefine, and refresh your spring style at TFC. Find your flow from new arrivals and the latest accessories to designer brands that make fashion a breeze. Shop it all with five interest-free easy pay payments. Embrace your style and celebrate all things spring. Shop exciting offers every day at tfc.ca. Hey, this is Carson Soucy. They score! And just like that, it's 3-2 Vancouver. And you're on home of the Canucks, Sportsnet Radio Network. You're listening to Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey on Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Own your home. Alpine Credits can get your loan approved. Alpine Credits homeowners get approved. Visit alpinecredits.ca. 702 elapsed in the third period tonight in Vancouver. Kings lead the Canucks 3-1. And JT Miller had a very long discussion with referee Chris Lee during the commercial break after taking a slash from Drew Doughty just before the break that he felt should have been penalized. And it was a pretty heated one, not only from JT Miller, who was asking questions, but Chris Lee was pretty animated in the discussion as well. Kings win the faceoff of the Vancouver zone. Anderson for the left point, dumps it behind the net. Zadorov on the near side, trying to clear the zone. Kempe holds in. Coming behind the Vancouver net. Campe left wing side in front for Byfield with a one-time chance, but he kind of fanned on it, and he missed the net. Kopitar gets it back. Left wing hash mark. Pass behind the net. Byfield missed it. He's hit by Zadorov, and Myers gets the puck, clearing it off the glass to the L.A. line. Nice, nice! Doughty behind his own net, hit by Miller on the forecheck. Gets it free to Byfield. Fires a heavy pass to center, picked off by Quinn Hughes. Hughes back into the L.A. zone on left wing. 
rims it around the boards. Miller meets it right wing side, protecting it from Dowdy. Drops it to Pedersen, who missed it, and Hughes does well to keep it alive at the line. For Pedersen with room in the slot left circle. Low shot, swept to the net, and it was a routine save for Cam Talbot in the end. Adrian Kempe on the near side, flips it high in the air to center. Hughes back to it in his own zone. And the Canucks will get a change. Hughes ahead to Suter. Left wing to the red line, dumps it in. Besser goes after Spence on the four check. Deneau back to help out, gives it away to Hughes on the left wing side. Hughes carries into the corner, collided with the referee, lost the puck, and the Kings clear it back to the Vancouver line. Here's Fiala, right boards. Watched by Hironic, sweeps it into the slot. Comes to England, top of the left circle, and he'll dump it back behind the Vancouver net. Hughes trying to play it up the near boards. Fiala broke it up again. He'll protect it right wing side. Kevin Fiala to the point for Jordan Spence, just held in. Spence passes left point for England. Middle of the ice, Fiala. Long wrist shot deflected, but it was blocked by Hironic at the front of the goal and never got through on Casey DeSmith. Quinn Hughes, deep in his own zone, passes to Philip Hironic. Canucks will get a change. Pod Colson, Oman, and Di Giuseppe out over the boards together, and here's Hironic firing it off the end wall. Pod Colson trying to get it on the four check. Can't get to it quick enough, and it's icing against Vancouver. 9-0-2 into the third. The Kings lead the Canucks 3-1. And that will keep Philip Ronick on the ice. He's been on the ice for 90 seconds. A little bit of a back and forth here as Arvidsson got involved with Ronick as they're skating back towards the Canucks zone for the icing. I can tell you one thing. Played on February 29th, March 5th, and tonight. These two teams do not like each other, and they play one more time on April 6th. So... I'm not sure beyond that if this is going to be a playoff matchup or not, but Batch, there's some animosity here. Based on how tight these games have been, the Canucks probably want to avoid the Kings if they can. Ian Cole, deep in his own zone, gets it ahead. Here's Di Giuseppe, left wing to center. He gains the red line and dumps it in. Oman on the four check. It's Gavrikov into the end boards. Di Giuseppe's after it as well. Plays it free up the far side. But it's broken up by Arvidsson. He'll flip it to center for Matt Roy. Dumps it into the Vancouver zone. And Dubois is first to it to negate the icing call. Here, Luke Dubois pinned to the left wing corner boards by Ian Cole. Bob Colson in to join the fight, trying to take the puck free. Gets it loose to Niels Oman up the boards. And he pushes it out over the blue line. But Arvidsson steals it from him. Dropped it back to Gafferkov. And the Kings will break out from their own zone. Gavrikov, right wing for Roy to the Vancouver line in front for Lazotte to the net is denied by DeSmith with the glove. Blake Lazotte in alone made a beautiful move to the backhand and tried to fire it over the glove of Casey DeSmith who was ready and waiting to make the save. And if the Canucks can come back in this game, that will be a huge moment. It's still 3-1 LA. Excellent glove save by Casey DeSmith, but this was a play that started in the neutral zone. Arvidsson with excellent back pressure on the Canucks who were trying to attack. And after that, Roy takes the the puck on the right-hand side and a very good feed. But Casey DeSmith ends up making the save and keeping the Canucks in this. Canucks clear to center. Dowdy dumps it back in and it deflects into the netting and out of play. 9.58 left in the third. It's Los Angeles 3 and Vancouver 1 on Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey on Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. There's a growing need for mental health support on the job site. BCCSA has launched a program that provides resources to increase awareness of mental health and its potential incidence and impact in the workplace. Learn how to recognize a possible mental health issue and how to access resources that can make all the difference for you or a workmate. Managing Minds at Work is an online, on-demand course followed by an in-person workshop. Start online today. Sign up now at bccsa.ca. Protect what matters most to you with a comprehensive fire safety plan from Get Fire Plan. Specializing in creating fire safety plans and construction fire safety plans for a wide variety of buildings, from high-rise residential properties to daycares, restaurants, malls, and many other types of businesses. Get Fire Plan's experienced professionals will assess your building, identify potential fire hazards, and create a detailed plan to mitigate risks and enhance your safety. Save $200 today. For details, visit GetFirePlan.com. When was the last time you hung out with a legend, a true Vancouver legend that every pro athlete, actor, and rock star who is anyone has gotten to know? A place where a legendary night can happen any night. Isn't it time you got reacquainted with this Vancouver legend? 
pre-game, post-game, even during the game. The number five orange. Hey, this is Carson Susi, and you're on the home of the Canucks, Sportsnet 650. 9.58 left in the third period tonight in Vancouver. The Kings lead the Canucks 3-1. to one. Brendan Batchelor and Randy Janda with you. And the player of the game is brought to you by Waypoint Insurance. From business to home to auto to personal insurance, Waypoint has your back. Waypoint Insurance together protecting what you love. Visit waypoint.ca. And we're going to go with Anze Kopitar as our player of the game tonight. A goal and an assist with his Kings up 3-1. to one. And he also has multiple points in now four straight games. So father time not winning that battle yet with Anze Kopitar. Pedersen to the L.A. line, dumps it in behind the Kings net. Anderson back to it far corner, hit into the boards by J.T. Miller. Cleared to the blue line, but Myers held in and dumped it back behind the net. Besser on the near boards, gets it back to Zadorov. His long wrist shot missed the goal. Byfield clears on the far side, and Besser takes it back into his own zone. Sweeps it rink wide near side, out of the reach of Zadorov. Kopitar chops it back in, and Besser will have to carry ahead again. Left wing to center. Plays it to Miller. Into the Kings zone. Miller. Bottom of the left circle. Drops to Hughes near side. Driving wide. Into the near corner. Hughes behind the net. Try to pass to Miller right wing. Broken up by Doughty. Anticipated the play well. And the Kings get it out to center. Oglander dumps it back into the left wing. Talbot out of the goal. Leaves for Roy behind his own net. He'll feed it up the near side. Fiala tips it out of the zone. And Trevor Moore, forechecking at the Vancouver line, dumps it past Veronik behind the net. Veronik back to the puck, got it to Suter, tipped it out of the zone. Hoaglander missed it. Kings dump it back in, and Veronik takes it again. He'll play it left wing to the red line for Hughes. Hit hard by Arvidsson as he dumped it in. Hoaglander gets it right corner, battling with Lewis. Played it free to Suter. Tries to chip it back deep. Pass was broken up by Gavrikov, and the Kings clear to center ice. Hughes quickly ahead for Hoaglander, bounces it in on Talbot, who's going to cover it at the side of the goal and get the whistle with 8.17 left in the third. It's still the Kings 3 and the Canucks 1. And that's really a rare opportunity for the Canucks in the third period where a lot of the puck has been in the neutral zone or going back in transition for Vancouver. A rare offensive zone face- face-off for them. And the Kings are really good at that where they force you to dump the puck in. They go back and they'll beat your forecheck. And it's just been... Very difficult for Vancouver to really go through the neutral zone with any sort of speed and really come with a forecheck here is at least really grinding this game out. But there's still 8 minutes and 17 seconds for Vancouver. Face off to the right of Talbot, won by Miller. Near point for Hironic. Into the high slot for Pedersen. Mishandled the puck. Hironic holds in for Miller. Middle of the ice. Carries back to the blue line. Goes left side Hironic. Into the near corner for Besser as Rick Tockett goes to the lotto line here in the final eight minutes of the third period, looking to get a spark. Hironic right corner, battling with Kempe. Besser across to help out. Plays it to the end boards for Miller. Protects it from Doughty. Feeds middle of the ice. All the way to the line, Zadorov held in and carries down the right wing side. Drops to Miller with middle of the ice, but Besser plays a pick play, knocks Dowdy to the ice. The Canuck forward doesn't like it, but you can understand why he's going to the box, and the Kings will get a power play with 7.44 remaining in the third period. They lead the Canucks 3-1. to one. And there has been a lot of frustration here in the third period for the Canucks. They wanted a couple of calls, especially with J.T. Miller, and he does make contact here, Brock Besser does, with Drew Doughty, and the usually stoic Brock Besser very animated here, letting the referees know that he's not a fan of that. As Besser, a slight bump on Drew Doughty, and Doughty does make a little bit more of it, no doubt about that. He was pretty light on his skates there, Batch. Quite theatric from the veteran Kings defenseman. Well, he is from Hollywood. And so the Kings go to the power play, looking to build on a 3 1 lead with 7.44 remaining in the third. It's a very uh, Eddie Guerrero lie cheat steal moment there from Drew Doughty. <laughs> Kings win the face off of the Vancouver zone. Spence leaves near side for Deneau. Back to Gavrikov, top of the point. Now for Deneau. Kings continue to pass it around the zone. Gavrikov gets it right circle. Side of the net, Dubois tried to scoop it home. Far post. Tight angle shot for Moore. Stopped by DeSmith, who takes away at the puck as the Canuck goaltender covered it up in the Vancouver 
forward, Suter and Bluger took exception to that. The linesmen get in quickly to restore order. And so this is a chance down low as Dubois gets an opportunity. He just walks out and tries to center for Moore. And it looks like it's a, a blocker save by Casey DeSmith that keeps the puck out. And then he covers up the rebound. But a, a pretty decent look there for Trevor Moore to the right of Casey DeSmith. Bluger and Kopitar on the faceoff. And Kopitar wins it cleanly. Left point for Drew Dowdy. Down the far boards for Kempe. Behind the net to Kopitar. Right wing side for Fiala. Top of the circle. Kevin Fiala to the point for Drew Doughty. Goes back to Fiala. Down the near side to Kopitar in the corner. Back to Fiala. Right wing faceoff dot to Kopitar. Mishandled the puck side of the net. Has to settle it down. Goes back to Fiala. Puck rolled over his stick. Shooter pressures him and forces him back out of the zone. Fiala still with the puck. Left wing for Kempe. Into the Vancouver end again. Adrian Kempe dumps it behind the Canuck net. It rolls near boards. Ian Pohl is after it and clears it. Middle of the ice to center, but Doughty knocks it down. Right side for Kopitar. Back to Doughty. Left wing Fiala dumps it behind the Canuck goal. Ian Pohl near corner. Pressure by Arvidsson on the forecheck. Gets it behind the net to Myers far corner. And he'll pass for Pugh Suter. Suter to center. Fiala stepped into him after he dumped the puck past him. That could have been interference as well. The fans think so. Should have been. But the referees don't. Doughty to the red line. Drops for Dubois. Left wing to LaFerriere. Into the Vancouver end. Force wide by Susie. Try to center a pass that was blocked off a stick. And now the Canucks come out with it. Oman to center for Zadora. Driving to the L.A. line. Nikita Zadora to the right circle. Tried a shot. Fired it over the net. It comes back to center for LaFerriere. Pressure by Patterson on the back check. He dumps it in. Ten seconds left in the Besser minor penalty. Peronic behind his own goal. Leaves for Patterson far corner. Pushed to the boards by LaFerriere. He drops to Zadorov, who clears it near side for Philip Peronic. Peronic on the back end. Got it to Di Giuseppe. Chipped it all the way down the ice. Besser's out of the box. And the Canucks penalty kill is two for two this evening. Just over five and a half minutes left. Third period. Kings lead three to one. Canucks need to generate more if they want to try and have a hope of getting back in this hockey game. Battle for the puck right corner in the Vancouver end. Lewis has it pinned up against the wall. Myers and Hughes trying to dig it free. Byfield's in there as well for Los Angeles. Puck still tied up along the wall. Now Myers gets it loose behind his own net. Flips it out to center. Bouncing puck knocked into the Kings zone by Pedersen, but it's called offside against the Canucks. 5.07 left in regulation time. It's Los Angeles 3 and Vancouver 1 on Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey. Streaming on the Sportsnet app and along the Sportsnet radio network. If you know your face-offs from your playoffs, you're ready to play now. If you've ever explained icing, you're ready to play now. If you know what PPG stands for, hint, it's power play goal. You're so ready for Play Now Sports. The official sports betting partner of the Vancouver Canucks. Get started with a $20 free bet at playnow.com slash radio. Conditions apply. Know your limit. Play within. It must be 19 plus. From the kitchen to your table, TSC is serving up spring. Awaken your inner chef with up to 35% off top shelf kitchenware. Put a twist on old recipes or take a stab at something new. Light snacks, hearty meals, scrumptious desserts. TSC has brands you're craving. KitchenAid, Vitamix, Curtis Stone, and more. To help you savor the season right down to the last bite. Shop now at tsc.ca. Exciting offers every day. Hughes cuts in front again, doing laps in the San Jose zone. Quinn Hughes shoots, he scores! And that goal was all Quinn Hughes. Hey, Vancouver. Rogers wants you to stay connected to your Vancouver Canucks. The Canucks are off and running. Well, what a heads-up play here by Quinn Hughes. Catch every goal on Canada's largest and most reliable 5G network with Rogers 5G mobile plans. To learn more, visit rogers.com forward slash 5G. That's rogers.com forward slash 5G. This is Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey on the official home of the Canucks. Canucks. Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. 5.07 left in the third period tonight in Vancouver. The Kings lead the Canucks 3-1. Brendan Batchelor alongside Randy Janda. Dan Riccio and Bick Nazar were with you pre-game and at the intermissions. They'll be back for the post-game show where they'll be joined by Ian McIntyre. 
Fast Eddie Gregory producing the broadcast from our Sportsnet 650 studios. Lena Satagian with us here at the booth at Rogers Arena. Everybody doing an excellent job. Canberra is the executive producer of Canucks Hockey and our fearless leader. It takes a cast of thousands to bring you the action along the Sportsnet radio network. Brock Besser to the L.A. line. Tried a shot. It was blocked to the right corner. J.T. Miller gets the puck. Miller feeds right point for Myers. Funnels it back behind the Kings net. Besser hits Anderson into the end boards. Kings clear to center. DeSmith goes to the bench. Six on five for the Canucks. Trailing three to one with four and a half minutes left in the third period as Pedersen takes it behind his own goal. Elias Pedersen slowly to center. Gains the red line. Is poke checked by Moore. Chips it free for Miller. Tried to dump it in. Lost it to Jordan Spence. Plays it back to center. JT Miller's got it for the Canucks. And play it back into his own end for Philip Perona. Perona starting the breakout. Drops to Niels Hoaglander. Hoaglander to center. Dumps it into the right corner. Jordan Spence back to the puck. Chased down by Connor Garland. Fires it around the near side. Fiala tips it out. Trevor Moore shoots. Just misses the empty net. And that'll be icing against the Kings with 3.57 left in the third. Los Angeles is up 3-1 to one on Vancouver. And you can understand why Rick Tockett's taken the goalie out with just over four minutes at that time. The Canucks need two goals here, so you need as much time as you can work with them. The stats tell you that the sooner you take it out, the better chance you have, especially if it's a multi-goal lead. Trevor Moore, had an excellent look at the empty net, though. Philip Ronick was the only player between him and the net, and just to the left. So the Canucks still have a, a chance here with an offensive zone faceoff. Hoaglander, Lafferty, Hironic, Garland, Hughes, and Suter on the ice. And Suter wins the draw cleanly. The Queen Hughes, top of the point. Passes right side for Hironic. Takes a shot. Stopped by Talbot. Rebound loose to the crease. And Talbot across to his right. Held it out with the pad. After the rebound hit one of his defenders. Hironic shoots. Hoaglander with a backhand chance. Side of the goal. Talbot made the save and covered up. Couple of good looks for the Canucks to get within one. And Cam Talbot. Holds strong with 3.42 left in the third. Kings lead 3-1. to one. And one, Still. One of the few moments tonight where the Canucks did get on the inside as Niels Hoaglander and Sam Lafferty generate a good opportunity as the puck was sitting to the right of Talbot for about a second, but no Canuck could jump on the play, but Hoaglander and Lafferty creating chances in tight. Face off to the left of Talbot in the Kings zone. Miller, Hoaglander, Besser, Garland, Pedersen, and Hughes on the ice for the Canucks. It's Kempe, Kopitar, Gavrikov, Roy, and Byfield for the Kings. Six on five for Vancouver with the goaltender pulled. 342 left in the third, trailing the Kings 3-1. to one. Los Angeles wins the faceoff. Matt Roy gets it near side for Adrian Kempe. Can't clear the zone, and Miller dumps it back into the right corner. Garland on the forecheck. Plays it loose to Brock Besser, tied up by Anze Kopitar. Besser knocked down by Kopitar. Puck still loose. Players from both teams trying to battle it free, and it comes loose to Hughes. Back onto the right side for Hoagland. Far corner to Brock Besser. Again to Hughes, top of the point. Now to Besser, right circle with room. Shoots, and he ripped it wide of the net. Pedersen gets it left boards. Rink wide pass to Besser, right wing. Passes to the back door. Garland shoots from a tough angle. Talbot across to his right, I think got a piece of it. Might have hit the outside of the net, and Miller recovers left corner. JT Miller, backhand feed to Hughes of the line. Now to Besser again. Right circle with a slap pass into the slot. They score! Besser's slap pass to the middle of the ice went off Anze Kopitar and past Cam Talbot. And the Canucks get a goal at 6-on-5 to make it 3-2 with 2.53 still remaining in the third period. They're not done yet as Brock Besser gets a lucky bounce off the right skate of Anze Kopitar, which deflects straight past Cam Talbot. The LA Kings goaltender cannot react in time as he's caught flat-footed. The right-hand side, Brock Besser winds up and was looking for Niels Hoaglander. The pass was behind him, but it found Kopitar's skate, and it's now 3-2. Besser's team leading 37th of the year comes at 17.07 of the third period to make it 3-2. The time of the goal is brought to you by Crow, your trusted advisors for 55 years. Learn more at crowmckay.ca. Five on five again with DeSmith back in the Canucks net. And here come the Kings to the Vancouver line. Lazat left wing, shot, stopped by DeSmith. Rebound loose in front as Dubois wanted to tuck it home. Now Arvidsson takes a shot off the right side. That went off the outside of the net, and Doughty gets it right point. 
Dowdy dumps it into the right corner. Hironic knocks it away from Lazat. Gets it up the boards for Lafferty. Passes middle of the ice for Pod Colson. Driving to center. Pod Colson dumps it into the right corner in the King zone. Anderson back to it. Into the end boards by McKay. Pod Colson in to help out. Knock down Lewis. Puck is underneath him. He clears it around to the near side. But Quinn Hughes has it for the Canucks. Hughes top of the point to Smith to the bench. Hughes wrist shot just missed the net past the stick side of Talbot and Pedersen gets it left boards. 155 left in the third. Six on five for the Canucks. Hughes with a shot tipped by McKayev. That didn't miss by much either. Vancouver pressuring, trying to get the tying goal as Doughty goes down in a heap. He took a high stick from Pod Colson who was shooting the puck. So there's no call. Hughes with a shot tip. What a save by Talbot on the deflection from McKayev in the high slot. Hughes gets it again, right point. Canucks throwing everything at the L.A. net. Pedersen, left boards to Miller, back to Pedersen. One-timer blocked in front by Anderson. Hughes after it, far boards, pinned to the wall by Dubois. Kings can't clear. Pedersen, top of the point, trying to settle a rolling puck. Goes left boards to Miller, still more than a minute left in the third. Miller mishandles the puck. Near side, skates it into the corner, goes back to Hughes at the near point. Now to McKayev, top of the near circle, to Miller, left corner. Back to Hughes at the blue line. Quinn Hughes to JT Miller, left wing, shoots, blocked in front, rebound comes to Pedersen, he goes back to Hughes as we enter the final minute of the third period. Miller, left circle, shoots, stopped by Talbot, and he holds on for the whistle. 55.2 seconds remaining. The Canucks throwing the kitchen sink at the Kings net, but it's still 3-2. Great opportunities for the Vancouver Canucks, and Cam Talbot with two great saves. The final one on JT Miller as he was set up on that left half wall, Going downhill, gets that wrist shot through, trying to go five hole, and Cam Talbot denies them as the Vancouver Canucks now are taking a timeout. Trying to set up, get some of their top guys the rest, and the LA Kings will take this as well because Drew Doughty has been on the ice for quite some time, for over a minute. And he's also leaking here as well as the stick hit him in the face, bleeding from the lip, but there was a follow-through on that play as Vasily Pod Colson tried to rim the puck. If it is a shooting motion, it's not called a high stick as Doughty caught the stick right in the mouth, but Pod Colson was clearing it behind the net. And so it all comes down to this. 55.2 seconds left in the third. Kings 3, Canucks 2. Face off in the LA zone. And Rick Tockett has the whiteboard out himself, speaking to his troops about what he wants to see as they attempt to tie the game. And the key here is going to be setting up that shot quickly. If the LA Kings are in a situation where they have time to know what's coming, they're going to get in those shooting lanes. So this faceoff is vital here. And can you set up quickly? The building's rocking. Hoping for a goal. Can the Canucks deliver? Face-off left circle of the Kings zone. Miller and Kopitar on the draw. Scrambled face-off. Goes to the left corner. Hoaglander's after it. Pins Anderson to the boards. Garland in there too, trying to dig it free. Puck still tied up in skates. Kopitar gets it loose. Couldn't shoot. Had his stick lifted by Hoaglander. Anderson with it. Passes behind his own net for Dowdy. Clears it far side for Trevor Moore. Gets it out to center. It bounced off a Canucks skate. It's rolling towards the empty net. And it just missed. Icing's waved off though, so Hughes has to start back up. Hughes to center with 30 seconds left. Left wing to the red line. Dumps it around the end boards. Garland after it right corner. Pins Anderson to the wall. Doughty takes down Pedersen away from the puck. It's a Kings penalty. And the Canucks will go to the power play with 20.6 seconds left in the third with a huge chance to tie this game. And the frustration of that high stick, I think, gets to Drew Doughty here. As Elias Pedersen was battling for the puck, and he just pushes Pedersen, uh, Doughty just a little bit, and a retaliation penalty by Drew Doughty. In the final 20 seconds of regulation here, the Vancouver Canucks have a power play. Six on four hockey coming up here. As the Canucks try to tr- tie this up. Their second power play of the game, they're 0 for 1. Miller, Garland, Zadorov, Besser, Hughes, and Pedersen on the ice for Vancouver. It's Kopitar, Kempe, Gavrikov, and Roy for the Kings. Face off to the right of Talbot. 
Scrambled faceoff. Comes to Garland in the slot. Takes a shot. Talbot made the save, and Miller gets it back left wing. To the line for Hughes. 12 seconds left. Left circle to Miller. Passes over his stick. Roy in the near corner is hit by Garland. Gets it to the point. Hughes holds in. Five seconds left. Right side, Pedersen. Settles. Left wing. Miller shoots it. Hit a skate in front. Comes to Kempe. He clears it down the ice, and the game is over. A valiant push for the Canucks in the closing minutes. Falls short as they drop an entertaining affair to their division rivals from Los Angeles. The final score, 3-2 to two for the Kings tonight in Vancouver. And it was a fantastic game. It was hard fought. It was playoff style. The Canucks brought it late in this game, trying to get that goal. But just a couple of goals in the second period there, a couple of mistakes that end up costing Vancouver first on the first goal and then a little bit later on where L.A. just... Picked them apart for a couple of minutes, and that's really the difference here as later on in the game, Vancouver tried their best to get back into it, but those goals in the second period came up costly. So the Canucks drop this one in regulation to the Kings, and as a result, are not able to clinch a playoff spot tonight. But that may be coming and will be coming in the coming days. Once again, the final score tonight at Rogers Arena. The Kings 3 and the Canucks 2 for Randy Janda. This is Brendan Batchelor in Vancouver. The Canucks Central postgame show starts right now. This is the Canucks Central postgame show. Down the near boards to Spence. Right by pass, right circle, center back in front. It's loose, they score! Lazard threw it to the front of the net. It bounced off Trevor Lewis at the top of the crease and in. Kopitar, top of the right circle, takes a shot, stopped by DeSmith, rebound loose. In the crease, kick wide to the net, but they score! Kopitar found it in the blue paint, shovels it home on the backhand, and L.A. goes up 3-1 to with 140 left in the second. With instant reaction from the players and coaches. Hughes in the line, now to Besser again. Right circle with a slap pass into the slot. They score! Besser's slap pass to the middle of the ice went off Anze Kopitar and past Cam Talbot. And the Canucks get a goal at 6-on-5 to make it 3-2. to two. Have your say on the official home of the Canucks, Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. The clinching will have to wait another day. Canucks drop a tight one, 3-2 to the L.A. Kings here on Monday at Rogers Arena. Welcome to the Canucks Central postgame show presented by the number five Orange. So the game is over, but is your night really done? The number five is open. You can chime in on the feedback channel, 650-650, our Dunbar Lumber text message inbox. Grab a phone line, 604-280-0650. Bick Nazar, Dan Reed with Randy Janda and of course you again uh, chime in uh, via the text inbox or the phone line on a frustrating night that we've seen before it was the trilogy for the first two games we've seen in the past 25 days and it, it resembled the first one here at Rogers Arena uh, back at Rogers Arena tonight and the Kings did what the Kings do they frustrate they poke they prod they annoy both the players and crowd alike and they get their two points randy styles make fights and this was not ali fraser but it definitely had an element of we've seen this before and listen the la kings are a team that especially on the road they're one of the best road teams in hockey they're comfortable playing these games and you gotta you gotta try to break down the middle of the ice and that's extremely difficult when you're chasing a game in a couple of moments whether it was the lazat goal uh, the double deflection off of Susi and the delayed penalty, whether it was, you know, losing battles in front of the net on that Kopitar goal where Ronick and Hughes, excuse, excuse me, Hughes was trying to, to make that happen. Uh, but, you know, they got beat on those plays. A couple of costly plays there where you lose battles and that ends up costing you. They tried at the end. It was, it was very close. Cam Talbot did his job, but... That second period is where you end up losing that game. Reach, was it a case of too little, too late? I mean, obviously with the result, but they go seven minutes into the period until their first shot, yep. and they don't go another nine minutes to their second shot on goal yep. in that third period. It was uh, sort of the story again, like too many shots that are going wayward from the net. It's similar to the Washington game a couple of weeks ago where they lost 2-1. Rick Tockett mentioned it then. Uh, we had a lot of shot attempts, but not enough that we got on goal. We're missing the net too often. It, it felt like they didn't get to the game plan 
again until they went six on five, right? The last five minutes of the period. How many high tips in the slot did we finally see? That's a play that they want to go to every night. We didn't see it once until the end of the game there, Randy. Well, I think a lot of it had to do with ozone possession time, right? Yeah. How often did they actually have one and dones in the offensive zone? Too That's many. A, it's credit to L.A. for, you know, making it difficult. But Vancouver oh. just wasn't able to establish a four check. So shots are one thing. But the ability to get the puck in the zone, ha- handle it, set up something offensively, and even you know set up those uh, those tips and deflections, that was few and far between, especially in the third period. But that's the mo in LA. Once they have a two goal lead, uh, they're going to be extremely difficult, and you know they'll they'll essentially make it difficult through the neutral zone. And guys, that's exactly what happened until much later in this game. Well, and one thing I really didn't like, you know, the second period they're they're humming along pretty well at, at one one. And then L.A. scores that goal against the grain, and they deflated for a little bit. They allowed L.A. to pile on another one. But, like, the Canucks, you know, they had the majority of the territory for for most of that period until L.A. got that one against the the run of play. It's really interesting because we're talking about a sense of urgency in the third period. Yeah. uh, Okay, where was it? Where are you going to get your opportunities? And yet, at the same time, that's kind of their undoing in the second period where there's maybe – too much urgency in a play, you know, the, that, that pass to Hoaglander gets away from him there, and you even think about the, the first goal where there's a miscommunication of who's coming on, and it just, you know, mistakes get made, and whether it's due to the urgency, whether it's just due to sloppiness, whatever you want to call it, but that, that stretch in the second really stands out, too. Yeah, this was a game where you start watching, and you're like, okay, this is a this is a game where it's so Going back to that 5-1 game, it was, okay, who's going to make the first mistake, right? Yeah. Even that game in L.A. was another example, right? Very tight checking, who's going to make that first mistake? And I thought both teams, even though at 1-1, it felt like, all right, the game's starting again. And you talk about that pass that ends up going, you know, is bobbled in the neutral zone. Ian Cole makes that pass to Hoaglander, goes back the other way. And, guys, it had that feel of, all right, puck management and being really really good on not making mistakes and that's what LA showed tonight they didn't make many right you look at the giveaway numbers very low they weren't giving away the puck until late in this game and made mistakes um, I think the Vancouver Canucks had a couple of mistakes you mentioned uh, through 40 minutes yeah they look strong they had the double the high danger chances that LA did but it's about mistakes in your game and this time of the year especially in a seven game series against a team like this yeah. on paper you look at them and you say okay they're they kind of threaten you, but it's the collective that is the the most dangerous thing about the LA Kings guys. And if they play like that and you make more mistakes than them, it's going to be costly. It's the story of a, of a playoff game, yep. right? Um, LA, for whatever reason, Jim Hiller thinks that this is the way that they're going to have success in the playoffs. I think they have more talent than, than they're willing to show on the ice. It's weird. Yeah. Like, the, the, they're, they're a good team. Now, I know they, they're on the second coach for the season. They can be like we we were going through the forwards in the the, the pregame show. It's a reasonably exciting one through twelve. They're they're damn good. Yeah, <laughs> and to to see like uh, look, Randy, we've done shows together. You guys know I love defensive hockey. Yeah, this is to an extreme that it it, it gets really tough, and, and it is a bit a bit of a discredit to some of the players they have. But they full credit to them. They they they're winning hockey games. They're committed. They they've got eleven losses on the road, as you mentioned, uh, in regulation for in the extra period as well. So. They, they, they can win playing this way. Just it, it's oh, they're committed to playing a staring yeah. contest, right? Like that's that's what they did tonight. Yeah. They, they had a couple of good shifts that they strung together there in the second, and they scored a couple of goals. And that, that's the difference in the game. You can even make the argument the difference is, you know, Cam Talbot made a couple more saves than than Casey DeSmith made tonight, right? You know, DeSmith had a couple where. You know, he drops them in front of him, and there's rebounds there. There's availability for the puck to be smashed into the back of the net. He gets caught swimming because the Canucks have allowed a couple of, uh, you know, seam passes. So he loses his net a little bit on that second goal, which ends up going going in off a skate. Look, however you want to say it, it was a staring contest that the Canucks lost. You did mention about the Canucks, you know, I thought in the first half of the game, they didn't allow very much, but... When LA did threaten the the blue paint, there was there were a lot of LA bodies there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, whether a, a rebound popped out, so there was that you know the boxing out to a certain extent, maybe not to the same level as we've seen, but this is another level of competition. This is a team that 
has lived that experience in the playoffs. They've you know lost to the Edmonton Oilers the last couple of years, but majority of those players have been at that level. They know what it takes. So I think more than anything, this is a great rehearsal for the Canucks. It's one of 82. Obviously, you want to win this game. You want to clinch a playoff spot. But yeah. more than anything, guys, this is they, they play them one more time as well. So like get this rehearsal in because it gets real pretty soon, and it's going to be maybe against this team. Well, I'm uh, I know we had this debate a little bit in the in the pregame, but you know is this a, a team you would like to face in the playoffs? And look, pick your poison right now with the Western Conference playoffs. If it's not L.A., it could be the Vegas Golden Knights or the Red Hot Nashville Predators. Uh, but uh, this L.A. team is just so frustrating to but, play against. Yeah. So frustrating. What I don't get, and, and maybe it'll get addressed in post-game comments from Hughes and Talkit. We applauded them, and they were very proud of their effort in L.A. of problem-solving this L.A. Kings team. And in that game, they, in real time, figured out how to play these guys. And that same problem presented itself today. So what was the counter to Vancouver's change? Well, it felt like they started to find it a little bit in the second before they gave up that, that second goal. And there's one um, there's one entry where they put it in off the end boards and a player is streaking on to it. It was Bluger launching it yeah, in. Right? And, yeah, and it just it carried on to a very heavy shift for the Canucks. I think it was the shift that led to Mikheyev's big chance in the second period where was, Cam yeah. Talbot that, that makes the big save. So they, they found ways to like, hey, like we got to hammer one in and try to get a guy, find a guy streaking. If we get the icing, we get the icing. But like this is the way that we're going to have to play through this right now. Yeah. So they started to find ways but again they give up that goal against the grain and it deflated the entire team for a minute yeah then what happens after that is when you give up two goals you have a, an emboldened la team that's just falling into their structure at that point yeah. they're saying hey we've been there we know how to play this game this is our game you know we're not chasing a game we're not dictating anything and that's where they were that much more difficult to break down but yeah that sequence in the second period it felt like that goal was coming for vancouver and then mckay have saved uh, by Talbot, that's a, probably the turning point of the game right there. Yeah. You get that goal, you're feeling really good about yourself. L.A.'s probably not feeling great. They got to chase the game, which is not their forte. But that save where, you know, he takes an extra second because he's got to turn around to get the shot off. That allows Talbot to set, makes the right pad save, and they built off of that. And then after that, it's the Canucks have firepower to get back into a game. But against this team, tough to break down. It's very, very difficult. And it's, it's one of those, uh, going back to the identity, Bick, when you've got guys that have scored 30 goals in their career, like a Victor Arvidsson, when you've got players like Kevin Fiala and you've got them committed to play a defensive game, mm -hmm. that's a powerful thing in the playoffs. Like yeah. If they're committed to that level, that's why I think they're capable of a shock, just based on the fact that if those skill players that were questioned in other markets, Kevin Fiala specifically, on his commitment to hockey and the defensive side of things, if he's playing that way in L.A., mm -hmm. you got to watch out for this team. So on the firepower, clearly they can score goals. Is there enough dynamic style of players to create the firepower? Because that's my disconnect. Because yeah. they clearly have guys who can score goals. On the Kings? Uh, no, Canucks. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll have the firepower to get back in this. Like, okay. Besser's got 37. Miller, Patterson, Hoaglander's having a fantastic year. As far as, like, generating overall chance generation in an environment that looks like this, when you have to push back and get back into it, that's the bit I look at and I say it... it it at times does look difficult for them to create that wave after wave after wave of pressure because they went nine minutes without creating a, a, a genuine chance. I thought a telling moment was when Rick Tockett put JT Miller with Elias Pettersson and Niels Hoaglander, right? You're essentially looking for that spark, but you're also trying to get away maybe from a matchup for Pettersson versus Dan O, which... You know, it started off well, but as this game went on and as they fell into their structure, you're saying, all right, we need to load up here. Eventually went to the lotto line. Um, yeah, this is this is the story of the Vancouver Canucks. They've done a great job of it this year, but the playoffs, are you able to win or be neutral in your top two lines? Are you able to generate? And that's going to be the story, really. The successful teams are able to get, you know, very consistent play. And if they're not giving up anything, that's, that's ideal. And if you're scoring, you're outscoring the opposition. But... That top six, you got to win those matchups, right? So are you able to generate off both of those lines? And today, you know, that was the challenge, I think, through 40 minutes, 45, 50 minutes, where they weren't able to find that rhythm 
in that top six, and that's why Tockett had to put his lines in the blender. It's the uh, it's the storyline that we've been talking about for weeks. Going back to the trade deadline, they weren't able to add an extra forward. You also have Elias Lindholm out of the lineup tonight, you know, out day to day, however yep. long it's going to be, but he's now nursing an injury, so you're sort of in this mindset that you're never going to get the player that you thought you were going to get when you made the trade in the lead-up to the All-Star break, but that's life you know and this is the team that at that point was still first place in the league essentially when they made the trade for Lindholm do they create enough yeah they've always been a team certainly in the first half of the year where they punched above their weight in terms of the amount of goals they were scoring relative to the amount of chances they were creating but they've gotten better as the year went on I just the first half of the like I mentioned how I didn't like how they sort of deflated after giving up that second goal but even the first half of the third period it's just they seem to get more frustrated rather than you know, finding a solution to the problem, as as you mentioned, Bick, where you're letting the L.A. Kings and the way that they play hockey get to you and get you off of your game. That's what the playoffs is, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. mind games are yeah. from, you know, one game one to seven. That's what it is. So, you know, get used to it. Get ready for the next game against this team on April 6th, which is not that far away. And that's the that's the M.O. It's, it's essentially teams, when you're playing one of 82, you forget about it. When it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's the real kind of education in hockey yeah. and playoff hockey. And that's something that this team has to get used to. Well, and think about the goals that they scored tonight. You have a heroic effort from Sam Lafferty uh, that, I mean, how often are you going to get that? And the uh, the second goal is, yeah, you're, you're leaning on them, but yeah. it's uh, a shot that goes in off a skate. You know, it, other than that, yeah, they, they forced Cam Talbot into a few great saves. Uh, honestly, I think DeSmith made more critical saves than Talbot. 